Oh, hold up, folks. Give me one second. I may have made a, a slight a slight miscalculation here. Just give me one second. In the meantime, continue to enjoy Jellyfish Ivara and a little bit of that Jellyfish music in the background. This is legitimately a royalty-free song called Jellyfish Party, so I figured it was perfect for this. Anyways, I'll be with you guys just one moment. be a good stream if mistakes were not made but that's okay we are here we are live we are good on all platforms we're gonna dive into some warframe today very excited to be playing on my noob account let me go ahead and cut off our jellyfish music Alrighty, so we are going to be diving in. It is a double affinity weekend, so a great time to be playing Warframe, especially if you're a new player. I do want to check the in-game audio real quick to make sure that you guys are going to be able to hear stuff. Yeah. I generally turn the master volume down because I'm on voice with people and I can't really hear them very well sometimes, so a little precaution, but uh, we're going to jack it up here just so that we can hear nice and well in the game. And I'm going to start out with some syndicate missions today. The main reason being that I'm just trying to get our night wave built up. Welcome. This is the noob account. So in order for us to really grow in our progression, getting a lot of these night wave things is going to help. For example, things like the two times weapon slots are going to be great. The additional uh, crystal creds will be awesome as well because we can pick up some really nice stuff from the night wave store. Things like orc and catalyst reactors and knit and extract in particular stand out as being very, very valuable to us but also some of the different auras that we don't quite have yet. All right, so we are going Let's to begin by doing some syndicate missions. We do have a night wave to do 10 syndicate missions. I've only done one so far on this account. We are gonna be doing syndicate missions for Steel Meridian right now. We could also do the ones for Red Veil, but the problem with that is it's gonna mess with our affinity. Hey, what's up, Cat? How you doing today? Uh, so we're going to go ahead and jump into this one. I didn't even look what it was, so we'll figure it out when we get in there. 
it honestly shouldn't matter that much. We're using kind of our general volt build, so we should be fine. Speaking of, our bolter is done, and our arc wing should be done today, which is awesome. Uh, I was going to wait to pull the arc wing out of the oven for the next episode of the Beginner's Guide, the next official episode, but it doesn't make sense. We can finish the arc wing quest on that episode, and pulling the arc wing out of the oven will actually give us access to another one of our night waves, which is to kill a certain number of enemies using the arc wing gun, or the arc gun, rather. How you doing today, Cat? Find the toxin mixer. Okay, so I'm guessing this is sabotage. Find the toxin mixer. What would that be? Uh, one moment, folks. Oh. Okay. Not a big thing. Let's go this way. I'm not gonna stop and fight stuff I don't need to fight. Like, honestly, though, we could be looking around right here. Give me one second. I need to close something because it's gonna keep dinging. If not, there we go. Alrighty. Hey, hey, stop. Stop. I was doing something, Grenier. Do you have no manners? I really wish that we had a loot detector mod on this account, but we don't right now, so we just kind of need to keep our eyes open, see if we come across any of the Steel Meridian medallions on the ground. Uh, they're going to be difficult to find, though, without an actual loot radar, so it's one of those things where we definitely will keep our eyes peeled, but it's not the end of the world if we don't get them. They are really, really nice, and they're an excellent way to sort of accelerate your gains in your different syndicates. Yeah, unfortunately we're not going to find any very easily here. Uh, especially with the way that this map is, is sort of lit, it's going to be difficult to find them either way. Usually though, they'll be off in alcoves or something. We may still find some as we go. Alright, did a little bit of simple painting on my minis today, but generally just had a really lazy day of playing some games and watching some stuff on YouTube. Right on, cat. Right on. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I appreciate the comments on the Beginner's Guide series, too. I've been going through and, and trying to respond to everything because I kind of fell behind for a little bit. Um, yeah, man. The Brayton Prime. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm still hard-pressed to be sold on it, but uh, it does have a decent status chance. You're right. Let's go ahead and remove the Biocatalyst. Okay. Bang, bang. Yeah, we could have stepped back to not take any damage there, but it doesn't really matter that much. And on to the next injector we go. Speed boosting all the way. Bye, enemies. I mean, honestly, oh, that was an overshot. That was a bit of an overshot there. L little bit, just a little bit. Uh, we do have a night wave as well to aim glide kill enemies, so we'll probably work on that a little bit if we can with this. See, stuff like this where there's a side door here. Oh, it's not open. Okay, it was lit up green, so I figured it was open. We might be able to find a medallion in there. Looks like that is not going to be the case, though, for the moment. No worries. We shall keep looking. There will be medallions here somewhere, I'm sure. It's really uh, interesting, too, because, like, sometimes you only find one medallion, and it's fine, because it's, like, the best medallion. It's the one that gives you 5k, and you're like, all right, this is good. I'm not worried about it. And other times you'll find seven or eight of them and they're all just the basic medallion and you're like, man, I could really use a payday. Really use a payday. Yeah, the lack of polarities makes it a lot of a lot of work to get a good build on it. For sure. And it's not even so much that it's a lot of work to get a good build on it. It's that it's a lot of work to get a build on it that even remotely compares to a basic weapon that isn't primed. You know, that's, that's what really gets me. Because I'm like, there are many, many better options for this. Although, to be honest, I don't think I have, like, a straight-up assault rifle that I use very often. Like, if I if I was going to take an assault rifle on a mission, I would probably just take the Kubikom, honestly. Um, that's a little bit more endgame than this account has access to, for example. But, it is a good point. The, there are quite a few options in assault rifles that I think are better in general than the Brayton, just based on the way that the Brayton functions. Like, I would honestly rather take the Gorgon because of the ramp up. What's up, Psychona? I was hoping I would see you today. How are you doing today? Uh, Alright, let's thrash these dudes. We are going to be doing... If anybody wants to join in, we're going to be doing a long defense mission on Mars here today. And the reason for that is we're trying to unlock the Phobos Junction for the noob account so that we can show people the stolen dream quest line and get them access to that sweet, sweet endo they're going to need. Uh, in order to do that, we have to kill 150 enemies in a Mars mission. And the hint is to try survival or defense. We're going to go for defense because I feel like defense is more consistent and sustainable than survival is when you're really trying to go long distance. 
uh, well, long time, I guess it would be more than long distance. The other assault rifles are in about the same ballpark as the Brayton, I think. Haven't tried the Gorgon yet myself, though. Soma is great, but the Prime is vaulted. Have you tried the Stradivar at all yet, Cat? Because that's the, the Prime that I'm working on now, assault rifle-wise, because I'm like, this thing seems like it'd be pretty good. That being said, I just don't use assault rifles that much now that I think about it. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm like bouncing around. We're supposed to be defending this thing, by the way, just just in case anybody's wondering what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, and I'm just running around being prey, because that's, that's how I do. I mean, honestly, on these early defense missions, you can kind of do whatever you want and get away with it. Speaking of doing whatever we want and getting away with it, we need to use a emote if we want to unlock another of our night waves. So here, let's let's shake the volt booty. All right, that's one more night wave complete. Mission accomplished. The last episode of the beginner's guide, we actually finished an excavation by standing on top of the excavator and dancing. <laughs> the early planets are just a little early. I can hop on for a bit. I got plenty of warframes I need to level right on. Yeah, that was... I forgot that this was a double affinity uh, weekend as well. And now I'm like super excited because one of the things that's been holding me back on the beginner's guide is just putting in the time to affinity grind. And now I'm like, all right, this is it, guys. This is the chance. We got to go. We got four hours. Let's smash all the affinity that we can. Oh, that's not going to help. That... Uh, okay. O okay. Game, please. We are in a perpetual falling in the water sequence here. Okay, cool. We found our footing again. Everything is fine. And there's an aim glide kill. Let's see if we can get a couple more. We may be able to finish the aim glide night wave right here. Oh, come on. Brayton, please. Brayton, please. Just kill stuff. I know you have, like, no damage because you're the garbage starter, Brayton, but please. Oh. Believe it or not, this actually does have serration on it, and I believe cold damage, but I can't say for sure. Did a little bit of modding right before the stream started, just to make sure that stuff was, you know, reasonable. And, like, our Broncos are actually... <laughs> I am happier using our Broncos, which I am very, very uh, opinionated about being garbage, than I am using the Mark I Brayton, just being honest. Eh, eh, can we maybe find a medallion over here? Not a good chance, but there is a chance. Wouldn't mind having a Steel Meridian Medallion here get us a little bit closer to that sweet, sweet Scattered Justice. And no. Not seeing any medallions here. That's a sad, sad thing. Uh, I really, really wish that we had a Loot Radar right now, but that's just something that we haven't been fortunate enough to get. <laughs> Let's smash all the affinity we can. Breaks the respawn. Exactly. That is... 100% me, right there. Okay, so we get a little bit of Steel Meridian rep here, 1600. Pretty decent, pretty decent. Um, oh, Cat, I don't know if I told you this. I actually... You know how we, we went the wrong way when we started our rep on, on our main accounts and like switched over to going hard Red Veil to counteract it? I actually capped Red Veil before I capped any other Syndicate on my main accounts, even though I started out as New Look. <laughs> Uh, so that's that's just an entertaining little tidbit because like the whole do two-thirds and then one-third thing Lake killer do 59. What's up? Thank you for that follow over on mixer uh, Yeah, so anyways what I was saying was you know the whole like you're supposed to do two-thirds rep with one and one-third rep with another I almost never make it to that last third rep. So I just ended up piling on red veil until I capped it uh, It was it was very interesting, but now I'm working up the others I've got like two almost maxed out and two that are getting there and it's mainly the prime parts that's a holdback, right? Like, the prime parts are a probable problem. Okay, so we need two rank ups to get access to our Scatter Justice mod here. RNG. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, nope. Nope. These are both locked, so we're not going to be able to access them yet. Oh, but they are missions on Mars that we could potentially unlock, so that's that's something we can do today. The other thing I was looking at doing is maybe some bounties on Cetus, just because we could use some of the resources available there. Actually, completing bounties on Cetus for Plastids is going to allow us to build new frames. Yeah, the prime parts were a pain for me. RNG giveth, RNG taketh, then RNG taketh a little more. There you go, that's exactly what it is. Then RNG taketh a little more. That's the, that's the real thing. Uh, okay, so let's see. Hmm. I see a Psychana. I also see Kingdom Master. I wonder if we can get him to hop in. Um... Sure? 
Okay, let's do this. Let's invite Saikana. And we can shoot an invite to Kingdom Master and see if he wants to hop in as well. And the RNG laugh laugheth in your face. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly that. Oh my god. Okay, so we were going for Oberon Neuroptics, right? And <laughs> me, me and Balt rad shared this four times and didn't get it. And we were just like, man... I will just go out and find me a goat and tear the horns off it. That's basically the Neuroptics for Oberon, right? Let's just do that. That's a lot easier. Uh, it didn't really pan out, but it was something we were willing to try. Okay, so don't think Kingdom Master is joining. Oh my god, a rad share with four formas is like ultra, ultra painful. Uh, so I'll queue us up for defense here. We'll just go for it. We'll get some people to join in. Oh wait, Kingdom Master joined, I think. He did! Hey! I'm gonna say hi. Let me hop over to squad chat. Hey yo, Kingdom. We doing... Long Ma's defense for the Phobos Junction you wanna come with. Okay. He doesn't... Obviously, he might want to go do something else. That's totally fine. It's a double affinity weekend. I don't expect anybody to hang around. It's really up to them what they want to do. So I'm just letting him know what our plan is. And, uh... Okay. It's fine. Cool. Alrighty then. So we'll wait for him to ready up. There we go. And we're going in. Uh, this should be a great opportunity to get some affinity. Honestly, I hope... That <laughs> I'm hoping we get enough affinity from this one mission that I can can the MK1 Brayton and just sell it. Because our bolter is done now, and I'm happy to pull that out and give it a use. I'm making affinity grabby hands. All the affinities. Um, oh god. Guys, I designed a really, really cool dojo, and I'm still poking at it and tweaking it. I'll show it to you guys later. Because um, we have the Eternal Sojourn Dojo, which is going to be for the new players. I should go ahead and grind up my Sobek so that I can stick on Shattering Justice and... Acid shells for shenanigans. I haven't even used the Sobek, but seeing that it was in Steel Meridian's like mod list made me think, oh, I should give that a try. I should give that a try. Go, guys, go! Speed like the demons! Let's roll. Oh, it's this one. I love this defense mission. Hmm. Oh, I was hoping I could squeeze up there because I was just gonna. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Maybe I can. Oh, no, I can't. <laughs> You just go over the other side. I was gonna say, maybe I can get right here and drop a vault wall and then just gank people as they come in, but that didn't work. So let's just put one here and go. Everybody else don't kill everything first because I'm a garbage, garbage Brayton user. The Steel Meridian mod gives it crazy status chance. An acid shell means the enemies explode when they die. Shenanigans. So it's basically death destruction mode or whatever. Only you don't take damage from it, do you? Since self-damage is gone now, you might get rocked by it, but you won't take damage from it. It's really interesting when you think about it. Do you still take damage from death explosion mode in Nightmares now? Or is that not a thing? Because, I mean, that would register to me as kind of a form of self- Well, I guess it's not exactly self-damage, right? Right. Maybe I'm overthinking this. I'm probably overthinking this. Come on, enemies, pop up. I got a Brayton that needs to cap out. I gotta focus on getting these kills anyway, because we need 150 kills before I can leave. Hello? Is there anybody up here? I don't see nobody. Oh, there's a whole bunch of dudes coming over here. Hi. Honestly, shock them. Shock them. Let them go. All good. Or just cut him. Just slice him up. That works. I do want to try to get our aim glide kills done here as well. Uh, so I'm just going to pop up in the air. I don't know why I just hit my speed boost midair. That was obviously not efficient. Or why it's taken me like three times to kill that guy right there. Yeah, it's not self damage, so it still causes damage. Yeah, it's just, it's one of those things that's kind of weird. Like, I don't know. I, I get that they wanted to pull self-damage out so stuff would be more usable. Like, I understand the design decision behind that. But it also seems kind of weird to me sometimes. I didn't play very much when it was in, though, so I don't know if it's bad or good. 
Like, it could be one of those things where I'm just thinking that it was better than it was as a mechanic and everybody else kind of hated it. Or it could be that by taking it out, they kind of lowered the uh, difficulty of the game a little bit. Which, I mean, given, given the uh, barrier of entry for new players, that actually might have been a worthwhile exchange, let's be honest. Because the real barrier for entry of new players is the complexity of the game, and reducing that complexity in any way is probably going to help with that. I'm just going to jump straight up here. If you're trying to do this as a new player, the easiest way to do it is to just bullet jump straight in the air and then aim. So you're static, you're not moving while you're aim gliding. And you can just kind of shoot at dudes. It's more the Brayton not being able to kill anything here that is making this difficult. Like, I honestly feel like I would be better off with this. Oh, there's two more. Alright, cool. One left. Like, watch this. I bet you we get this guy almost... Yeah, that was way faster just by switching over to the Bronco. The Bronco actually kills things. Oh, we could end up getting some really nice mods here, too, while we're at it. So we are at 30 total kills. We need 120 more. This should be significantly faster, though, since I don't need to use the Brayton or anything any longer. I do want to use it in a way, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We're going to use what weapon makes the most sense while we're engaging. MK1 Brayton, you really got to get headshots. Yeah, it's it's got nothing if you're not headshotting. And I'm not that accurate. I'm not going to sugarcoat that in any way. I, I use a lot of different weapons that don't require me to be super accurate. The only accuracy weapon that I really use is the Lanka and the uh, Rubico. But I mean, with the Rubico and the Lanka, if you take the extra time to aim that headshot, you get so much damage that the value is clearly there. Alrighty, let's see if we can get some of these guys. Hi there. Let me, let me give you a slashy slash. I do like the dual skanas a lot. As far as like early game melee weapons go, I'm really, really fond of the dual skanas. I just like the two-handed or the dual wield style too, though. And I don't even have a stance mod for it yet. Like, that would make it even better. Because the way you flip around and stuff with the stance mod is just incredible. Hello there, friends. Where, where'd you go? Well, I guess they were here, but then we killed them, so now they're all gone. Alright, what are we at now? Uh, 39. So we got about 10 that time, which means we're going to be going a lot of rotations here unless I find a way to pick it up. Are you sure this is an objective q and I'm hearing a lot of bias. <laughs> Define bias, Grant. Define bias. I will more than clearly state when it when it is a bias thing. Like, if you're better at headshotting than I am in these games, then you should absolutely use headshot weapons. Uh, if you're not good at headshotting, though, there are quite a few options that don't require it. For example, melee is extremely, extremely useful on new players. Uh, for new players, rather. That's why a lot of the guides recommend Excalibur. It's not because Excalibur is the best starting frame, in my opinion. It's because anybody can mash E and murder the entire field of enemies. Like, it does not take any aim or skill to do that. Hello there, friend. Give you a little little stabby stab. How's it going? A little stabby stab to the gut there. And I think there's one more enemy left over here. Oh, here he is. Ha! Got him. You're pretty much saying shoot them in the face for it. Well, I mean, yeah, you, you do want to shoot them in the face. Or explosive weapons... Yeah, explosive weapons are great for new players, especially. Um, I mean, honestly, it's crazy to me, like... Melee in general is really powerful at the moment. It's probably easiest to get some of the good mods. Well, not well. that's for sure true, because right now we have, uh, we have both Volcanic Edge and, like, the cold version of it. So the plus 60% cold, plus 60% heat, and plus 60% status. We have both of those on our melee weapon, or available to our melee weapon just from running spy missions on the first planet. So yeah, it's it's definitely very easy to put together a strong melee weapon early on in the game. Uh, and you're right about melee being in a particularly powerful place, Cat. Have you seen any of the, the back and forth from people about how exalted weapons are actually kind of weak now because of their limitations for mods? Like the fact that you can put Blood Rush on a sword and you can't put Blood Rush on like the exalted blade makes the Exalted Blade actually much weaker than just a basic, you know, melee sword. It's a really interesting thing, and I see it more and more as I go on, right? Like, it's primarily an issue with the melee weapons, I think. But I do see it happening where there's certain mods you just can't put onto Exalted weapons, and it actually takes them down a notch. 
Uh, and yeah, John Boy, you're you're absolutely right. Like explosive weapons are so good, but I mean that's also part of my eight times crit multiplier at a thousand percent crit chance. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like okay, that's that's a little bit strong there, a little bit, little bit strong. Uh, but my my big point about the self damage being out and why that's a little weird to me is because if you really think about it, right now if you're end game Warframe and and when I say end game I just mean like you're doing sorties like you have access to all of the content maybe you don't have arbitrations yet but you're close kind of thing. Um, and if you're there, whether you're a new player or a MR28 veteran player that's been around since the beginning of the game. Nine times out of ten going into missions, unless you're doing it for flavor, you, if you're going for efficiency, you're just going to be using the Kuva Brahma. And that's because the explosive power of the Kuva Brahma to just clear waves is nuts. The fact that new players and super experienced players are both usually resorting to the Kuva Brahma if they have it, kind of seems weird to me. Like, it, it seems like there's no experience slash skill gap at all, because they're very much just evening out at that point. Uh, I don't use the Brahma all the time. I actually prefer using a, you know, a little bit more variety than that. And even if I'm not leveling weapons, I like to just mess around with some of the other weapons I have. Uh, the Kuba Comb is a favorite of mine, but you really, really need the shotgun ammo mutation for that because otherwise the increasing fire rate just means that you run out of ammo ridiculously fast. Hello, enemies. Where are you? How many kills are we up to? Oh, 84. So we're we're gaining ground much faster now. Uh, not using the Mark I Brayton is great. I use the Brahma in high-level missions only or when farming focus. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. But, like, if you're if you're going for a pure clear efficiency play, like, if you're just trying to get through stuff, the Brahma is great for a brand new player that just happens to have gotten it and for an experienced player that's been playing for, you know, the entirety of the game. So this is the game that copied Anthem's ideas, right? Oh, my God. This is the game that was better than Anthem before Anthem even came into existence. Uh, probably one of many, actually, in regards to Anthem, but... Yeah, this game, I feel like, is... So I've played a little bit of Destiny 2, I've played a little bit of Anthem, and I didn't find either one to be particularly great. And that could have just been that I didn't play enough, like, I'm, I'm not gonna say that I... I played so much of it that I can make a totally objective comparison. But I can tell you the things that I like about Warframe, and I can tell you that those things don't exist in Anthem, or in Destiny 2. You even get three dialogue choices in some of the Warframe quests. Oh my god, three dialogue choices, are you serious? What is this, 20... oh wait, no, I, I mean a better joke would have been, what is this, 1994? Um, and it's free, yes, and it's free. And honestly, the community here is great, in my opinion. I've very rarely run into salty Warframe players. You do sometimes in super high-level content. But otherwise, people are pretty chill. People are really nice to new players because they realize that new players are the lifeblood of the game. Uh, the, the major difference for me for Warframe and, say, Destiny 2, because I'm not really even going to bother with Anthem. Like, Anthem doesn't require any comparison. Everybody already knows that that game is is going down the, the short road to the dead times. Uh, the thing that really stood out to me with Warframe is that unlike Destiny 2 where you have, you know, I, what is it, four classes, three classes with three different specs in those classes. So you got a little bit of variety there. You got nine different playstyles defined essentially. The thing that I like about Warframe is that you have, what is it, 32 frames now? I don't know if that counts primes, though. I think it's 32 frames now, and each of those frames has a unique playstyle. They allow you to take advantage... Oh, 42. Okay, there you go. So friends to murder at the defense point if you need them good. Thank you, thank you. I'm on my way, Psychona. I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, when it, when it comes to Warframe, there's 42 different frames right now. Now, some of them do group into the same thing, like there are a couple different frames that are specialized in defense, etc, etc. The catch there, though, is that even if they're specialized in defense, some of them do defense a different way. Like, there is a very big difference between a Gara who might be focused on getting her damage shield up to crazy numbers and just running through the enemies to wipe them out so they don't do damage, than there is between a Frost or a Limbo whose whole point is to bubble the, the defense point and hold it. That's like a, 
an interesting thing for me is learning all of the different playstyles for all of the frames. Then there's Inaros who specializes in metric F-ton of HP. Yeah, Inaros is somebody that I still don't feel like I play properly, uh, but that I am kind of learning more and more as I do play as him. Like the other day, I actually drained a sentient to res myself and was like, this feels good. This is what Inaros is. Uh, so there's there's just so many different playstyles to learn. Oh my gosh, like a great example of that, guys. I, I just unlocked Titania, or I just got Titania Prime a little while ago. And at the same time, I was like trying to do the farm for the Wisp frame. Wisp is a buff frame that has some very, very interesting capabilities. And I was trying to unlock her, but in order to unlock her, you have to farm her parts from a boss that's actually kind of an interesting, complicated fight. So... What I found was that because I had Titania, I was able to make that fight a lot more simple. And learning Titania basically benefited my ability to farm Wisp. So it was a really, really cool sort of interchange where it's like, okay, so because I put the time in to learn this one thing, I was rewarded with another thing which I can then learn. And I, I enjoy games that let you learn things. Like, that's really what I'm all about is learning different stuff in games. So it was super beneficial to me. Because I'm like, I, I get an extra thing to, to learn now, and I already learned a thing to get the extra thing, so now I'm learning even more things. Rising glitchy wires during Ropolis fight. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. You can entirely avoid those wires if you have Titania. Like, she is so good for the Ropolis. It's insane. It is insane. Like, I switched over to her, and I upgraded her uh, dual, her Dex Pixias as well as I possibly could. And it was just nuts, the difference it made. Like, just absolutely crazy. I was, uh, Kat, I was running them with Balt and two other people, and eventually, like, Balt and I ended up just going in as a duo instead, because it was faster once I figured it out with Titania. I see why you didn't get too far into PoE. This feeds a lot of the same itches. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the thing, is PoE is a very, very similar game. Uh, this game just appeals more to my my style primarily, and you know what, if I'm honest, Grant, I think the thing about this game that pulled me in faster than PoE is that PoE has the hideout that you can customize and all that stuff, but you get that later. In this, you get access to like your customization and your ownership and, and agency in the game a lot sooner, and I think that's what really sucked me in, being able to recolor my frame and recolor my ship and start hanging up decorations and wonderful things like that. Like, it really just helped me feel seated in the game. I also just like the fast-paced gameplay. Like, the... <laughs> so it's really weird, too, because the first time somebody had me try Warframe, I actually kind of would, like, not often get sleepy when I played it because the, the fast-paced gameplay is such a... a loopy-type thing that, like, it's almost like the vibrations of a car. Once you get into them, it just kind of puts you to sleep. Cosmetics, the only worthy casual. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm going to say it's much faster pace, yeah. So, like, initially that pace lulled me to sleep, and now, like, it keeps me on the edge of my seat because I'm always looking for something to do. It's different when I'm here streaming. Like, let me tell you, me playing this streaming and me playing this when I'm just playing it are very, very different. Uh, yeah, I, I am much more focused when I'm just playing. Okay, I got the 150 kills. This AA meeting sucks. What's up, Wiz? How you doing, man? <laughs> There's coffee in the back. Coffee helps. Let me tell you. Coffee helps. And I mean, if anything, this is a Ninjas Anonymous, okay? We're, we're dealing with our Space Ninja addiction today, and we're dealing with it by murdering hundreds and hundreds of Grenier. Well, 160 Grenier so far. I mean, unless you take the team total, which is more like... Holy Kingdom Master, wow. So I've got like 160 kills and Kingdom Master has like 550. So we know who's carrying. Frankly, have seen videos of End Gear Shaper Atlas map grinding on Path of Exile. I feel like Endgame PoE is a more fast-paced than Warframe. Oh, that's probably true. That's probably true. I think the ramp-up speed for Warframe is a little bit faster. Soon gonna be 43A. Oh yeah, who are they, uh... It's not the broken frame they're putting in. Right? They're, the broken frame's not coming in soon? 
I know that the the deluxes are launching. Protea. Oh, that's right. I forgot about Protea. Yeah, Protea is Protea is very cool looking. I forgot about Protea. I watched the dev stream for her. Uh, that's going to be super exciting, and you have to wonder how they're going to put her in. Because that's the other thing, too, is that the variety of activities you can do in this game is so deep, in my opinion. Like, yeah, most of them come back to this basic gameplay loop. But if you have a game with a solid base gameplay loop, like an enjoyable gameplay loop, there's no reason not to expand your content by feeding people back into that gameplay loop. In fact, Railjack recently got updated so that it plays more into the normal Warframe speedy combat gameplay loop, and I think it's a lot better because of that. Uh, it used to be... Railjack used to be a very, very slow gameplay mode, and, like, I immediately disconnected with it when I started doing it. I was super excited at the premise of having your own spaceship. I was like, oh man, this is cool, I'm gonna have my own ship, that's awesome! And then I got it, and I was like, this is really, really different. I'm on the PoE side. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I still have my PoE account. Like, I have a feeling by the time I get back to it, though, it'll be a new season and what I'm doing, and it might not even make sense. And that's just because of busyness. And, like, I I'm not gonna lie, guys. This right here, this is my everyday addiction. It really is. Like, I get done with all of my work on the YouTube channel and all of my work on my job. And the first thing I do is I hop on Discord to see if uh, Balt, who's been, like, my best friend in life for... Oh, God. It has to be, like, 13 years now. Holy crap. That is insane. I've probably known Balt. Wow. That just blows me away. Anyways, he started playing Warframe with me as well. So, like, when I get done with all my YouTube stuff and my work stuff, I immediately hop on Discord and look... To see if he's playing Warframe, and if he is, I'm like, all right, we doing Warframe stuff now. Let's go. <laughs> I do that while I'm working. I do that while I'm working. I did get puppy dog eyes last night a little bit though, because we were we were her and I were playing Valorant together, because uh, she was taking a break after doing really really well on one of her nursing exams. She got a B yesterday on her nursing exam, which is awesome. Um. And we had been playing a couple games of Valorant together, and like, Valorant is a game I enjoy, but it frustrates me after a little bit. And I was getting kind of frustrated. B got a B, exactly. Uh, so... We had played a couple games of Valorant, and then I looked over at Discord and I saw that Balt was on Warframe, and I was like, I'm gonna hop over to Warframe now, and she was just like, okay. I felt bad, man, but... <laughs> Valorant gets under my skin sometimes. Now Railjack is way better. Yeah, see, King, uh, Kingdom Master agrees. That's that's exactly what I'm talking about. Railjack has improved so much since they've sped it up a little bit. I still want to get back to PoE to play through the new acts and try out the Atlas, but I don't think I'd keep going to it like with Warframe. Oh, Mastery Rank 4 is available to us. Woot. Thank you guys so much. We have MR4 now. Uh, it's like, kind of feel free. You're probably listening to the stream, but that's okay. Feel free to swap stuff up. I'm going to do my mastery rank right quick. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, we're not taking the Brayton Mark 1. We're not, because if this is an Assault Rifle Mastery Test, and I can't remember which one this is, that's not going to work for me. I'll take the regular Brayton. I might even check the upgrades on it a little bit, because we might have some better stuff for it now. Uh, let's see. Like, we do have a non-flawed Serration. We also have Stormbringer. Speed Trigger's good. Uh, primary damage type on this is Slash, so if we have anything that increases Slash damage, like Sawtooth Clip, that'll be nice. Uh, fast Hands isn't really necessary. Magazine Warp is cool. Oh, Infected Clip. There we go. If we have the capacity left, now we've got Corrosive, which is great. Okay, that should set us up very nice. I'm everywhere. <laughs> indeed, indeed you are. Uh, and I still gotta remember to get the Ignis... Is it the Ignis 
Wraith blueprint? I think that's what it is from you later, Psychana. I was going to ask for one for this account, but what I want to do with this account is I want to do the... When I'm doing one of the episodes, I'm just going to ask in trade chat. Because I see a lot of people saying if you ask in trade chat, they'll just give you one of the blueprints. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to prevent uh, other like new players from getting rooked on it. Because I've seen people saying that they sell the, the Ignis Wraith blueprint for 20 plat in trade chat and new players buy it. And that's a huge ripoff. skills with weapons, Tenno. But what are your endurance? Uh, I've played it with both, Grant, but I prefer the keyboard and mouse. Survive until the timer runs out. Oh, okay. This is gonna be really hard, guys. We're gonna we're gonna have to kill things for a little bit. Come on, bring it. What y'all got? Let me tell you, it ain't nothing. Y'all got nothing. I'm gonna bring the blast to you right now. Yeah, this is why melee is so strong early on. Come on, why you running? Why you running? Let's be friends, and by friends, I mean let me disembowel you right quick. Oh my gosh, speaking of disemboweling people... Oh, I got Necros Prime on my main account now, guys. So good. So very good. I love my Necros Prime. I like desecrating people's corpses and getting more loot for it. It's great. It's how we do. I didn't actually understand how Necros Prime's Desecrate worked at first, though, so, like, I kept turning it on and being like, it's not doing anything. He's a real fancy-looking friend. He really is. So, most of the time when I get Primes, the first thing I do is I, like, switch their helmet back to the non-Prime version just because I like to be different. I'm one of those types, right? I, I drink my coffee from a, a mason jar and I tip my pinky when I do it. No, I'm just kidding. But, like... I normally switch the uh, the prime head back to the regular head or the prime body back to the regular body just to have a little bit different of a look. I tried that with Necros and I was like, no, no, Necros prime just looks great. I just want all of that. Speaking of disemboweling people, I should try Crusader Kings 2 challenge again. Oof. Oh my. Oh, I'm sorry. Please look away if you have epilepsy. The screen is going crazy. Okay, let's get out of here. So now we have hit MR4, which is great. We are just one mastery rank away from being able to get some of the better goodies from the dojo. Oh, I was going to show you guys that, actually. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I'm going to switch the crappy Brayton back on. Welcome back, crappy Brayton. We don't like you. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is see if I can grab this window. What do you think of the new Night Wave? I love the new Night Wave. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, we can let's let's go jump into that real quick so I can show you guys what they're kind of doing with this because it's brilliant. Oh, we got the Glassmaker sigil. Awesome. You keep being you. Uh, so dream. we're gonna jump into the first Glassmaker thing. If you haven't seen this yet and you wanted to save it for yourself without spoiling it, feel free to look away. You know, Cephalon's right. Probably got one a bit cracked. Kissing up to you all the time. See, in the old days, crime and punishment was all in the hands of those Oricon judges. The Seven. Mercy was a quick flash of the jade light. But, if they wanted to make an example, they'd suck up your soul and make you a prisoner of the glass. Seems like magic to us nowadays, but dreamers... Someone's got it puzzled out again. Souls getting snapped up and trapped up. All we've got to go on is this crime signal I pulled from the weed. No sign of our killer, and not a soul to tell us where they went. Okay, so this is the new glassmaker, folks, well, but I'm gonna show you ground. something else that's really neat See real quick. See if you quick. can suss out any clues about whoever this glassmaker might be. So, those of you who have been around for a hot minute know that I was working on Eternal Sojourn, which was a clan for new players to be able to come in and get the resources they wanted. But it wasn't meant to be a permanent home for them, right? It was just a place for them to come in and get all the stuff they need super cheap, super early on. And that's great. But I mean, what what is a game without offering people a permanent home, right? So I present to you guys the first floor plan layout for what will become the Gamer Under Development Clan. This will be the dojo. It's going to take probably, if I had to estimate, it's probably going to take about three months to finish building this. 
but it's going to be gorgeous. There's going to be gardens everywhere and, and training rooms and uh, dueling rooms and all this wonderful, wonderful stuff. I spent like three hours yesterday just dragging stuff around and making sure that stuff fit and that we had the right amount of energy uh, and deciding on how I kind of wanted to do this. Uh, so like, one of the things that I was focused on was making sure that stuff that's not something to be visited, like reactors, is all going to end up on the outside of the, the building. So you don't really go to the outside edges. Everything you need is going to be kind of interior, uh, except for these barracks here, which is something that's bothering me, but I think I have a solution for that too. So yeah. Anyways, this is going to be awesome. I'm very, very excited to be building uh, this massive, massive dojo. It's going to cost me a ridiculous amount. Like, what is this, the room count? It's going to cost 78 forma to build this. And you can only, for those of you that play Warframe, uh, or those of you that don't, rather, because those of you that play will know this, forma is not super easy to acquire. You can build about one forma a day. So this is roughly 78 days worth of formas to get this going. Good finally finishes the dojo and DE introduces another massive room like the hangar. Well, the nice thing is, with this design, if they did, we could honestly just build it off the hangar. Um, but is, is this not a gorgeous design, guys? I love this. It's not perfectly symmetrical, but it is somewhat symmetrical. Like, it's symmetrical across one axis, but on the other axis, it's asymmetrical. Uh, I wanted to just kind of make it different, make it interesting. It's a very, very cool thing I'm excited about. Uh, anyways, I'll turn that off now, and we can go look around at Glassmaker real quick. Uh, so this is kind of some of the thing they're doing. We can pick up this weapon here, and we can analyze it. It's going to look at it and then give us some information about it. So it's just no signs of significant wear. This is an Austrian weapon. Uh, the Austrian, as we know, are the people of Cetus. Okay, so he, he had a weapon that he was expecting trouble with. We can inspect him. Used to be a middle-aged Austrian, but he's been degraded from okay. the inside out. Glass. But not all the way. You see in that left hand? Oh. Weirdest of the weird. What's left of him is resonating. Like singing some weird ass song. Not digging this. Oh. Not at all. I never noticed that on my other my other account. Uh, anyway, so we can continue exploring around here, and there's like stuff laying around on the ground that you can research. So you can pick up like this tablet here, give it a look. It'll analyze the evidence. Once it does, you get some information here. Oh, and there's the thing that I needed for the first thing that I messed up. Uh, either you get me an Orcanera tilt shifter, or this broadcast unit is as good as dead, and so are we. By the Unum, nothing. So you sold me, I'm downloading this now? Are you? <laughs> uh, yeah, Grant, it's it's definitely uh, an interesting thing. And once you get in, give me your name. Give me your name, I will add you, like, let me tell you, brother, I'm on this all the time. I will I will help you through everything. Uh, anyways, so yeah, this is a, an interesting little thing they've added where you can kind of do these investigations. But we're going to hop out of this now and get everybody grouped back up and go do some more content. Let's see, what do we have for this? Killing Eximus's mobile defenses and arc yeah. guns. Oh boy, who wants to do arc missions? Also still seeing the dojo plant. I thought I turned that off. Oh. <laughs> fail. Fail on my part, guys. It wouldn't be a good stream if there wasn't a fail. Okay, my bad. So nobody actually got to see the, uh, the thing you pick up and read. But yeah, essentially you can walk around and investigate clues. I think the new Night Wave is great. I thought the old Night Waves are great. Uh, and if you guys don't know, you can open up TuneIn and you can go back and you can watch some of the old Night Waves. Uh, there's great stuff like the Wolf of Saturn 6. I'm, six, I'm just going to turn this on for a half second because I, I love the old like radio story idea. It's a bad moon, dreams. Can you feel it? Oh, that's good, Cat. I didn't know that. I just, okay, I'll stop it here. You guys can appreciate it yourself if you want to. I love this old radio host storytelling. I think that's great. Uh, and Johnny Boy, if you were just talking about the rewards, guys, you want to talk about cool rewards, let me show you cool rewards. That is a cool reward. That is a brand new orbiter 
specifically designed for this. Nora Nightwave's Orbiter. This thing is beautiful. It's just, just gorgeous. Also, that ship has teeth. Do it? It do have teeth. Uh, so yeah, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous ship. Uh, and this thing right here, how can you not want this? If you play Warframe, how can you not want these shoulders right here? I, c I saw these and I was like, God, everybody in the game is going to be wearing these once they get them. They're so cool. They're so cool. They're like floating glass like fractals that you can put on your shoulders. I can't wait to get this to put on like chroma and stuff. It's interesting because if you look at it on Volt, they seem a little too big for Volt. I think I'd put them on a beefier frame like chroma or Atlas or something like that. There's also this great Boolean Sindana. See, this I kind of like on Volt. It's almost like a battery charger on his back. How, I don't know, but they don't really do it for me. Oh, really? Not feeling it, Don Giovanni? The shoulders? The shoulder... <clears throat> Excuse me. Not feeling the shoulders in particular or all of the Nightwave stuff? I remember hearing that after the first Nightwave, a lot of fans were praising her on Twitter and it took her completely by surprise. Who are all these people and why are they being so nice? <laughs> Because Nora Nightwave is a boss, that's why. Uh, I'm also excited about stuff like this. I actually don't have any really cool stuff for my operator. So being able to get stuff like this, which is like a glass mask for your operator, or even the uh, stuff for your Kavat. Excited for that, because I, I use my Smita Kavat all the time on my main account. Digging this. I want to be Jordy LaForge, guys. Let's be Jordy LaForge with glass. I'm digging it. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm just, even this, like, there's so many cool glass things that they've added with this, I'm excited to get. Just the shoulders, but more power to you. Different strokes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I like the earpiece. Uh, Dawn, did you like the, the shoulders from the Wolf of Saturn 6? Because I got those from the, the last intermission, and I thought those were awesome, too. Like, I use those on all my beefier frames. Actually, you know my favorite frame for the, uh, the wolf shoulders? Hold on. Hold on. I, I've shown you guys this before. But I'm gonna pull this up one more time because the wolf shoulders are amazing on this. Boop. Oh, you can't see it. So, so like, no. Oh, I didn't switch it yet. There we go. Sorry, I'm using studio mode, guys. Uh, the the big bulky like almost football shoulder pad that you get from the Wolf of Saturn Six. So this is my Kuvara. And, like, what I did with her that was super great is that the Wolf of Saturn 6 gives you this chest armor that looks like football pads that are made of metal. And the shoulder pads that look like they're football pads made of metal. So for Kuvara, I didn't put the shoulders on both sides. I just put them on the right side. So you can't see it in this. But she's essentially got, like, body armor and then one shoulder. She almost looks like a Mandalorian. That's what it's kind of like. And I dig it. Kuvara is my uh, Kuva hunting frame. So it's, it's awesome to be able to have her look super cool like that. I love me some Kuvara. Love me some Kuvara. Uh, okay. So, Nightwave-wise, we have Eximus left, we have Mobile Defense left, and we have Arc Gun left. Ugh. So, who wants to do Arc Gun? <laughs> uh, Arc Wing missions are some of the ones that are least favored by the community, in my experience. People are just not super, super stoked about them. Cat, I see you on. You're going to be joining us, Cat? Shall I shoot you an invite? I'm going to shoot you an invite anyway. You can always decide not to join us if you, if you don't want to. Uh, but yeah, anyways, so Arcwing stuff is is generally not something that I find people super excited about. Uh, let's see. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Speaking of Arcwing stuff, Odinata is ready. I remember Arcwing. <laughs> oh, that's a Ko Carnage emote. Right on. More power to you. Ko is a good dude. I, I really enjoy Ko's streams. He's one of the only streamers that I even really watch anymore. That does seem like a long time. <laughs> Sorry guys, got a really funny YouTube comment there. I was like, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, okay, so we automatically get our guns and stuff. Awesome. So now if we wanted to, we could do the arc gun mission. How much is that even worth, though? Yeah, 4,500. That's a pretty vi viable thing. Nah, not looking for Arcwing at the moment. Just messing around with some builds before I log back out. Swapping out the guns I'm leveling. Yeah, he's got some good emotes. He's also just a good dude. I like Ko because Ko actually has a background in game development, so it's interesting to hear his opinion on games and hear him talk about, like, design aesthetics for them and things like that. Oh, double whammy. Okay, okay. Oh, I have to complete the Arcwing quest, so I guess I can't do that one. 
because I want to wait until we are back on the actual beginner's guide videos to finish the Arcwing quest because I don't want to leave people hanging on that. Uh, so instead, I guess we just look for a mobile defense like Tharsis. That works. Let's do some mobile defense. What else do we have? Syndicates, Eximus, mobile defense. That's it. Syndicates are rough. Does anybody in chat know? Like, if how do you... How do Syndicate missions work if you bring a party? Does everybody gain rep with that Syndicate? Can they go if the Syndicate hates them? I've never really, like, because of the complexities of Syndicate reputation, I've never really grouped with people for them. I usually just queue up for them solo. Yes. And yes. Oh, okay, so people can come with you, but then they gain rep with those Syndicates, so you can kind of screw up their Syndicate rep if you do it. See, that's, that's why I don't usually go with other people. I've been hauled into ones I am too low level rep on. Okay, interesting. See, I'm less concerned about hauling people in and I'm more concerned about like messing up somebody's rep or something. Like I would hate to drag someone in and have them lose rep with their favorite syndicate. That would be kind of garbage. What's up, homies? Hi, 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 die. Oh, look at that execution though. That was beautiful. Once again, this is why dual wield is awesome. Just gonna shoot your corpse a little bit for fun. Okay, enough screwing around. Let me let me go get to the uh, mobile defense point here. I was having a little too much fun there. After that execution, I was just sold, sold, sold. Alrighty, let's slam that in. Okay, here we go. got to defend things. I just couldn't get see the little pickups. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I figured everybody would be able to get the medallions, but uh, yeah. I don't... Like, if you guys are okay with it, maybe... Oh, I can't even access the Steel Meridian ones anyway, so it doesn't matter. I would have to rank up with Steel Meridian before we'd be able to do any more of mine. Although, I guess I could get dragged into you guys' as syndicate missions if you have some. Um... I think that's worth, what, 4,500 Night Waves, so it might be worth? Hi there. I'm gonna keep shooting you with this kind of crappy weapon, because I want it to be done with. Hi there. Alright. See, I'm doing better with headshots now. I still need a few Syndicate missions. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I am totally down with that. Uh, the other thing we could do as well is, like, bounties on Cetus or Ovalis, because I need Plastids from those so that I can build Rhino or Vobon. I'm not gonna lie, though. If I get Plastids, guys, we're building Vobon on the noob account, because that is some fun times. I remember playing this when Ko got first into Warframe. I know life is so hard, but I haven't played it in a long time. <laughs> Dude, I I know life this all the time. I know life this to the point where, like, I fall behind on house chores, and then I feel really, really bad about it, and then, like, take an entire day off to just go do house chores. Uh, speaking of, today I'm probably going to have to kind of do that because I got after the stream I've got to go mow my lawn because my landlord is always always on my crap about it like I was just chilling yesterday and I got a text message from him lawn's getting kind of long time to mow it again and he like sent me an eye roll emoji too which was like dude that that seems really passive aggressive and crappy like why you gotta be like that I don't mind mowing the lawn I was planning on doing it this weekend anyway but why you gotta eye roll me I, in my defense, though, guys, in my defense, I do have allergies that make mowing the lawn kind of suck, so... It's not just that I'm, I'm busy playing Warframe or that I'm lazy. I'm not saying neither one of those things is true, but... Yeah. It is what it is. Hello there, friend. Oh, uh, the Brayton is 19 now. Come on. More Brayton affinity. Let's go. Hello there. God, I love the sound it makes when you headshot people. It's so satisfying. It's like a crunching noise. It's almost more like you're hitting them in the head with a hammer than a gun, but I'll take it. It's it's such a satisfying sound. Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down there, sir. 
it's interesting too because it looks like a lot of the steel meridian like uh faction mod weapons are weapons of the grenier because like we literally just saw the dual cleavers and the sobek i think it's called at the same time i'm not saying i'm lazy <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'm not lazy, I just have allergies that aren't greatly benefited by mowing yards. Uh, and frankly, I don't care that much. <laughs> like, there have been times when I've just been like, you know what I should do? I should just salt this yard so that I don't have to mow it anymore. And now I can't do it because I admitted it on video, so like, if I do salt it, the landlord's gonna be like, I know what you did. I know what you did last weekend. Melee is so much fun. Bye there. Oh, the Brayton's 20 now. We're getting closer. Yes, yeah, Steel Meridian weapons are Grenier and Parent Sequence are Corpus, since that is where they came from. See, yeah, that's what I figured. You can kind of tell by the Steel Meridian armor. It's also very reminiscent of the uh, Grenier. And then Red Veil is just crazy. Red Veil is just crazy, and New Loka, I can't even remember which weapons are specific to New Loka. Getting started is the hardest part after that, usually it's easy. Yeah, 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 it's, it's pretty much that. Hello there, Fran. No, like, on my, I, I was surprised that after, like, two months of playing, I felt like I could kind of do whatever I wanted in the game on my, my main account. Uh, without any trouble whatsoever. Hello there, friend. Uh, so we got a nice mod there. I'm gonna just jet it to the exit now, because everybody else is probably there already. Yeah. I have spent too much time shooting the things with the Brayton. Here we go. Woo. Hello, friends. Let me dance for you. Let me show you the dance of my people. <laughs> Oh, I was talking about chores. Oh yeah, chores are like that too. Chores are like that too. No, like I hate doing, okay, so like I hate doing dishes. I really do. But when I do them, I'm very organized. Like I pile up the dishes sort of on either side of the sink and then fill the sink with hot water and then set the other sink for rinsing and just work my way through it like that. Once I get set up, it's awesome. Red Veil gives me Unfallen vibes, only less trees. I would think New Loka would give you the Unfallen vibes. Uh, New Loka is interesting because, if I'm not mistaken, New Loka was basically started or founded by one of the Orokin, right? No, I have a dishwasher. I have a dishwasher, but if I neglect the dishes, you can't just put them into the dishwasher with, like, stuff stuck to them. You have to kind of clean them off. Let me see if I got a Mobile Defense Syndicate. Sweet. That would be awesome, Kingdom Master. Red Veil talks about fire and all that. That's true. That's true. I just thought of New Loka because they're all about planting stuff and greenery and things like that. Um, but, Kat, you would know, right? Like, New Loka was founded by that Orokin person that was supposed to develop Titania, right? Is that kind of where they came from? I think that's where they came from. Whereas Red Veil obviously was founded by Rel and his followers. Nope. Okay. Saikana, you got any mobile defenses on your syndicate you want to drag us into? Let's slide and backflip and slide and backflip. I love that so much. I'm, I'm so easily amused, guys. So easily amused. Uh, we could raise some of our mods, too, honestly. Alas, none? Okay. Then we'll just find one more mobile defense to knock out, and then we can just do whatever syndicate missions you guys do have if you want. Oh, what do we got here? Just a regular defense. Okay. Um, that's a spy. That's a sabotage. Gradivus is unlocked. That's also a sabotage. I wonder if there's a mobile defense over here. No, all that I have left there is Arcwing. Okay, so I guess we just take any mobile defense. Yeah, I guess it'll be any mobile defense here. Let's go with... Sure, that one works. Uh, and one sec, folks. I'm gonna check out my phone because it's been blowing up. Okay. So as we're as we're loading in, I'm just taking a look at this, trying to keep up with what's going on. Ah, thing, please. <laughs> That's amazing. 
Uh, yeah. Anyways, sorry guys, I posted a new tutorial yesterday and there's just, it's getting a lot of, a lot of action, so it's always interesting to see the difference between just posting sort of general content and posting tutorial content. If we want to play this again. That's awesome. That is exactly what I want to hear, uh, Don Giovanni. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that DE feels the same as you do in a short time because right now my YouTube channel, I think, is hovering 2,300 members or subscribers, and uh, I'm very, very much looking forward to applying for Warframe partnership when I hit the threshold, which I think is 2,500 now. Uh, it used to be a thousand, but it's 2,500 now, and we're super, super close. And we're just trucking along that way. I would absolutely love to be a, a partner for Warframe. And I, I hope that DE will see the value in the content that I create for the game. Uh, and honestly, I just I, I look forward to working with them. Like seeing Scott sit down and just talk candidly with some streamers and content creators about the direction of the game currently and about the things that you know players have been sort of frustrated about lately. That's awesome. That's more of what we need. We need devs just having that contact with the player base so that they can understand what's actually, you know, going on in the larger audience. Because I'm sure as a dev, like, it's hard to have a perspective of the entire audience. Like, you have a vision for what you want your game to be, but that isn't necessarily the same vision that the, the audience or the consumer has. So it's really helpful to just be able to sit down and candidly talk to them and be like, okay, so what, what is the difference between where I'm at and where you're at? And I think that DE has done an excellent job of that in recent times. Uh, so kudos once again to Scott and the whole DE staff. <laughs> I need to get my mage to 60 in WoW Classic. Oh my gosh, how's, how's that going, man? I haven't, I haven't even dipped into WoW Classic, but uh, I know a lot of people are loving that. I think they were founded way later, but they worship her. Ah, okay. That makes more sense. Hello there, friends. Where you at? I got a Brayton with your name on it. As two guys run past me because I'm a spaz. All right, cool. You, you look like a lot of fun. Open up them loving arms. I got bullets for you. All right, you're done. If this is infect or infested, I wonder if this... I mean, this isn't a dark sector, though. We looked. It's not a dark sector mission. What the... <laughs> is, oh, my God. Kingdom Master has the bug where he's just lying on the ground the whole time. Look at this, guys. Come back, friend. Come back. We're going to ride you like a surfboard. No. No return. Ha-ha. <laughs> Also, I think both New Loka and Red Veil are large Tenomade weapons. Tigris, Kastana, Spira, Dark Dagger. It's my favorite. My husband gets hit with that all the time. The lying on the floor bug. <laughs> I see it every now and then, and it's always really, really funny. Especially if you're trying to find the person, because you're like, where are the... Oh, there they are. Yes, for cleaning. <laughs> there you go. Floor cleaning. I'm sorry, I misread that. Yeah, they're like a Swiffer. You just hop on and, and skateboard around the level and we clean up all this infested refuse. Uh, the Brayton says that it's at level 21, but if we check... Oh, it is at level 21. Okay. Not, not as much of a discrepancy there as I thought. You know what doesn't make sense? Why did I even bring other weapons in here? If I would have just brought the Brayton, we'd be getting more affinity on that. Uh-oh, something is coming. Do we think it's a Shadow Stalker? Come on, Shadow Stalker. Yeah! Okay, stalker on you. Oh, guys, this is this is sweet, sweet, sweet music to my ears. Everybody cross your fingers now. Cross your fingers because the noob account needs a dread. Hello there, shadow stalky friend. No, don't leave. Whatever you do, don't leave. Oh my gosh. Oh, ow. Ow. That wasn't very nice. Oh, did he drop anything, though? 
No drops? Why you like this, Shadow Stalker? Why you like this? Oh, that's true. The Bronco. Barely level Mark 1 Brayton versus Empowered Shadow Stalker. Oh, Lord. Yeah, it's like that. It's like that. Hey, man, I tried. I was shooting him, though. Everybody's gonna get shot. Uh, yeah, I got smushed before we murdered him. Yeah, I know. That's, that's sad times, too, because he was so close. But for what it's worth, Cyclona, every time I get Empowered Shadow Stalker on my main account, he rolls me, too. <laughs> Like, he rolls me hard. I don't think I've killed him once since he became empowered on my account. But you can't blame me for trying. I would have loved to get that dread right there. Oh, we have somebody waiting for a door. Uh, and then, Kingdom, you said you can't do anything? I can't do attack or do anything? Oh, no. Are you just, like, stuck stuck? Help the Kingdom. I can't res you or anything, I tried. Oh no, look at this. Were you working on that console when you got killed? Both panels must be activated simultaneously. Oh, okay. Artifact found. Defend it until the extraction team arrives. Oh man, that's crazy. Oh, you're Mesa, too. Mesa does not belong pinned down. Uh, have you tried backslash unstuck yet? Maybe try backslash unstuck if that hasn't been something you've done yet, because that could help. I don't know. I don't really get that bug very often. And, I mean, I, from my understanding, usually when I get it, it's somebody else telling me I'm lying on the ground, but I'm able to do whatever. Let them down you? Okay. Okay. Let's get them over here. Oh, they're already there. Nope. Come on, Taxon. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Okay. We gotta let them hurt our friend, Taxon. We can't defend him right now. Be a good little companion and chill. Get shot, fools. What's up? Come take very little damage from my Brayton. Oh my god, these damage numbers. The damage numbers popping off these enemies right now hurt me more than the enemies. I'm telling y'all right now. Actually, this is what I should do. There we go. That's a little bit of damage. Alright, let's go get our boy up. Oh, he just got himself up. Okay, that works too. And away you go. Oh my gosh, this Brayton though, guys. This Brayton. I'm bringing just the Brayton next time. Just the Brayton. I need this Brayton to go. I need it out of my life forever. I can't wait to get to the Boltor, because at least that gun is fun. Okay. Let's get out of here. I mean, honestly... It occurs to me that this being a double affinity weekend, I'm going to run into some problems here. It's a moon raid. Hey, welcome in Moonsword. Is it Moonsword or Moonsword? Moonsword86, welcome in. Thank you for the raid. Much appreciated. How you doing? Uh, I don't know if this still works, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it, so hopefully this works. Let's see. I hope that works. Uh, I, I'm doing fine right now. We're just trying to get through our Brayton Prime. Uh, how was your How was your stream, Moonsword? What were you streaming? I'm trying to get the caster to go off in chat, but I don't know if it's working. Doesn't seem like it is, which is weird. Let me check that command. It should work. Huh. All right, then. I was playing this fine game right on. You getting some of your double affinity weekend grind in? That's a that's essentially what we're doing. This is a noob account that I'm using for a beginner's guide on YouTube. We're just putting a little bit more affinity on it. Stream was good. That's awesome. 
Right now we're trying to burn through this Mark 1 Brayton so that I can dumpster fire it as quickly as possible. Quad Affinity got some boosters as well. Oh, there you go. That That's the way to win it. Uh, I did the insect might take a while. All better now. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Catching up on the in-game chat. Uh, so I think that should have done the mobile defense part. Yeah. Hey, Moonsword, thank you for that follow. Together. <laughs> I love that, guys. I'm sorry. I'm such a nerd, but I love that so much. Uh, so we have Eximus enemies left. We have Syndicate missions and Arc Gun kills. You I can't do the Arc Gun stuff, so... Uh, Kingdom Master or Psychana, either one of you guys. I'm Kingdom Master, you're Johnny Boy on Twitch, right? I'm, I'm trying to keep these correlated. I found the best way to farm levels on all this stuff. Railjack, really? <laughs> Do you just go as like a uh, border or as crew and then like accrue a ton of affinity? Yeah, okay, cool. I got that right. Uh, so Johnny Boy Psychana, if either one of you guys has syndicate missions you wanna you wanna run, let's let's do that. Let's knock that out, cause I'm not that worried about the rep, and uh, I am very very interested in getting more Nightwave levels, cause that 4500 should kick us over into the two free weapon slots, which is awesome for where we're at right now, uh, cause one of the things we're gonna have to start considering very quickly, given that this is a double affinity weekend, is that we're going to need some more weapons to level up. Uh, we do have the Mark I Kunai's that we can level up, which is going to be painful, but doable. Yeah, we're going to need a new melee weapon soon. Uh, there's quite a few things that we're going to want to start crafting probably sooner than later. Just going to pop over to the market while this loads and look for melee weapons. Oh, too late. I'm not picky on syndicates. What's affinity for again? Uh, so Don Giovanni... Affinity, especially for a new account, the, the importance of it is that it unlocks new content. So basically, for this account, the goal is to reach Affinity level 5 so that we can buy the Arcwing launcher part from our clan and a couple other things like that that are locked behind Mastery Rank. Uh, and Affinity essentially goes to ranking up weapons, and as weapons and frames rank up, so does your actual account. Basically, for every frame you rank to 30, you get 6,000 affinity on your actual profile. And for every weapon you rank to 30, you get 3,000. And for every companion you rank to 30, you get another 6,000, I think, too. Yeah, affinity is essentially XP. Which is another system that I think is really, really interesting, because you essentially have, like, XP located on your gear, as well as associated with your actual account, which is kind of cool. So this is just elimination. Alrighty then. Oh, and I forgot to take off everything but the Brayton. Darn. Mistakes were made, guys. Mistakes were made. No alarms. Okay, or, or you know, just sound the alarms because you're a level 30 enemy and I am a scrub. Let me just scrub-tastic you here with my shield. The nice thing is, since these guys are such higher level, we should get a nice affinity boost from killing enemies here. Hello there, friends. I see you. Man, and this wall really, really enhances our damage because before we were barely scratching these guys. Uh, so, gaining some decent affinity there now. I don't know if we finished the last mission with the Brayton at rank 22. I can't say for sure. So I'm not sure how quickly we're gaining affinity, but I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be reasonably quick. Hi there. Oh yeah, that was that was a chunk right there, just killing one guy. So, if we can find a room with some enemies and throw our shield up so that we can take these guys out, that should help a lot. Yeah, those are very, very chunky. Basically, the more enemies we can find and get some damage on and maybe pick off as they're dying, the better off we will be. Uh, the reality is we're not going to kill things at any kind of comparable rate to the people that we are with. Ooh, but we will get some nanospores there, which is... Oh, and plastids! Yes, yes, plastids. Sweet, sweet plastids. So here's the trick, guys. If we get enough plastids, we can start building Vobon. Unfortunately, he will still not be available until after the Affinity Weekend. But that's okay. I'm honestly more excited to just get Vobon out there and built. Uh, we could also build Rhino. Rhino is a great frame for new players. The only reason I'm favoring Vobon is because I enjoy playing Vobon a little bit more. 
The one with Grenier. I remember doing the wave map for leveling. Oh, yeah, Hydrin. Hydrin Sedna, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hydrin Sedna is the best. Uh, the only reason I'm not using that Moon Sword, and, and I didn't read the thing about Railjack, but I should. I was solo running Geon Point, which is in the Veil. Two to three missions, I was ranking weapons from 0 to 30, and I didn't even get out of the ship. That's crazy. Holy craziness, Batman. Um, no, so yeah, I, I use Hydra or Hydran Sedna quite often, and I can usually get rank 30 on frames in two runs on there. Uh, but it really, that's on my main account. On this account, I don't actually have access to it yet, which is why I haven't been using it. Because uh, the idea for this account is to basically try to play it as if I were actually a new player. So if a new player wouldn't have access to something, I don't have access to it. Now, I am allowed to do things that a new player could do, like go into looking for group chat and ask someone, hey, can you taxi me to Hydran Sedna if I wanted to? Uh, but I'm trying to save st stuff like that for when I'm actually recording episodes of the Beginner's Guide so that I can show people how to do it. Because as a new player, like, it's not necessarily intuitive to know that you can go to uh, looking for group chat and ask somebody to carry you into a higher level mission so that you can level stuff faster. And, like, I talk about doing that with them all the time. But, like, I want to actually show them stuff like that as well, because that's super beneficial. I mean, technically, this is a supplemental part of the guide, so they could use this as as sort of a way to get used to doing that. Uh, but generally, I like to show it if I can. Which is another reason why I haven't just asked Psychona for the Ignis Wraith Blueprint. I'd do something similar myself, but I love my unicorn way too much. Oh my, I my main is, is all the fun, and I... That's part of the reason why I'm doing this right now, is because I actually don't spend that much time leveling the noob account, and it's kind of limiting the content I'm able to show off. So I figure while the double affinity weekend is up, and since I'm doing a four hour stream anyway, I might as well stream on the noob account so I can go ahead and get some progress done on it so that I can show more stuff to people. But I mean, the main reason I'm doing that too is because it's very easy to get far in the game and be like, you know, just throw on your 60-60 mods and get going, but, like, not every new player has 60-60 mods. Do you play your main account all free-to-play? Uh, on my main account, I did buy, I want to say, $10 worth of plat one time. But I haven't bought plat since then, and I, I do generally play it free-to-play. Uh, and the, the main reason I play it free-to-play is just because there are plenty of ways you can make plat in the game if you're industrious and I am very very industrious uh, for example I I was running low on plat the other day and I needed to buy Warframe slots and I realized that because of all of the rep grinding I'd done on Fortuna I actually had like nine extra tech enhances for those that don't know tech enhance is the mod for Kavats that allows them to potentially stack their buff twice uh, which makes it very very valuable for people with Smita Kavats or for crit Kavats because if you get that buff to stack twice, that is a huge, huge increase. Uh, you actually do get, I believe, four times values if your Smita Kavat stacks twice. So I went on Warframe Market and I was like, well, how much do these go for? They went for about nine plat each and I just listed them on there and it took a little bit for them to sell. But I got myself back up to uh, 50 plat and I've been able to buy all the slots that I've needed and stuff. Although I will say this, while I do play the account free to play, I did buy the full on Tenocon 2020 ticket. And that's honestly because I like the shirt, man. I like the shirt. I want the uh, Tenocon shirt so that I can wear Warframe gear when I do my Warframe recordings. It's like my weird thing. Maybe it's OCD or something. I don't know. But I, I like that. Uh, when I stream stuff from different game companies, if I happen to have swag of theirs, I tend to wear it just because I like to. I think it's thematic and it fits. Uh, so I'm excited to get my Tenocon shirt, guys. Super excited for my Tenocon shirt. I probably won't even use the pin. Maybe I'll pin it on this. Maybe I'll just pin it right there. Center of the forehead. Tenocon, guys. Uh, but probably not. More than likely, I'll just wear the shirt. Although, my fiance does collect pins, so we might just I might just have her take it and put it in her pin collection. Uh, anyways. Yeah, so I, I do primarily play free-to-play. Had some very good luck with Plat, though, too. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Psychona. You're my hero. You remembered. I did not. Let's go. Let's cut this other stuff off. 
Goodbye, Bronco. I love you. You're great. But I honestly don't want to level you right now. Okay, we are just Brayton now, folks. This is it. We're going all in. All in on that Brayton. Thank you, Psychona. You're awesome. Uh, let's go melee weapons here real quick. Did we already build the Ankyros? We didn't, but we have the blueprints. I wonder if we can. I got some Warframe swag myself. Came with the unicorn, the Founder's shirt. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's what you mean by the unicorn. I See, I'm, I'm still fairly new to the game. I've only been playing for like four months, right? So... I'm guessing the unicorn is slang for the uh, Excalibur Prime. We received intel that I think that's the one that's... Yeah, the Excalibur Prime is the one that's unique to, uh, like, initial... Or, that. Yeah, what do they call it? Founders. There we go. Every game calls it something different. Oh, okay, that was good. Normally when I see Cephalon Suda, it means people are coming to kill me, so that, that scared me for a minute. I was like, uh-oh. Here we go. Oh my. My guns do absolutely nothing to these guys, but that's okay. Alright then. Hello, hello, friends. <laughs> yep, that's the one I'm helping. <laughs> Yes, exactly. I'm helping. You know what's really funny, though? Okay, so this actually made me kind of kind of happy, and there's, there's, you know, something that I do really like about the Warframe community as a whole. I was trying to explain to new players that a lot of the times if there's a event alert, like a Gifts of the Lotus thing, they may not actually have access to the missions, but you can still go into looking for group and ask someone, hey, I want to get the, the stuff from the alerts. Can somebody drag me through? So the other day, I was doing that, and it was on this account, of course, and I asked that, and some guy messaged me, and he goes, Hey, look, I haven't played in a long time. I can't say that I'm good. I just kind of came back to the game, uh, but if you want, you can come along with me. And I was like, Oh, heck yeah, thank you. So we went into a level 60 void mission on this, this account, guys. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this somebody's target? This is a target. see if we can scan this bad boy. Oh, this isn't the synthesis scanner, though, so I can't actually scan him. Okay, well, we'll leave him alone then. Uh, anyways, so I went into this level 60 void mission, and I kid you guys not, like, I wasn't, I wasn't even scratching things. Like, it was embarrassing how badly I was able to, to interact with the mission at all. So you know what I did instead? I was like, all right, if I can't kill stuff, then I'm going to be useful to the team however I can be. So I sat back and I speed boosted everybody and I provided the damage wall that they could shoot through and I just made sure to sit back and play a support role and do whatever I could to help out. And I used my four to stun enemies that were attacking uh, interception points and was just like, this is it. I can't kill anything. That doesn't mean that I can't help out. That doesn't mean that I can't contribute to the group. I just need to find a way to do it. And that's what I encourage people to do when I was talking about it on the Beginner's Guide, too, is it's like, just because you can't kill stuff doesn't mean you can't contribute. Oh my gosh, Wisp is amazing. Look at this. Wisp is just phenomenal. Ooh, Fatal Acceleration, Projectile Speed, and then Rupture. They get some nanospores from that, which is awesome. We got some, some nice ranks there, too. God, I hate Aristotle Seth. <laughs> it's, I, I hate it because it's such a maze. The UI seems a bit different from what I'm used to. Yeah, they've totally updated it. They've updated it, and there's more UI updates coming in the future that they've already shown. Uh, in fact, I think that when the next thing launches, we're getting a new UI theme. Uh, that's actually a cool thing, too. I don't own very many of these because they cost plat and I'm cheap. But uh, there are some very, very cool themes available. I really wish I had this one. The Stalker theme is awesome. There's the Tenno theme, the Nidus theme. Uh, the Orican theme is kind of cool, too. But I, I would really, really like to get the Stalker theme just for Kuvara, guys. Just for Kuvara. Yeah, it's updated. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. And what's crazy about it, too, is like... 
it's not just that those themes are available. Um, there's also different backgrounds. So I use the legacy background on my main account. Uh, but the Vitruvian is the one on this one. And there's also different sounds. So if I switch here... That's like the original Legacy Warframe sound, and then I can go to Vitruvian and I get a different sound, or I can go here. Yeah, so they've changed a lot of that stuff. You can also change the UI scale and stuff like that. Uh, okay, if anybody else has Syndicate missions left, I'm down to do them. Hey. If not, we can move on to something else. Wait, what kind of sounds are these? Uh, one of those was the, the traditional Warframe sounds. Another one Let's was a Corpus sound. All right, there we go. Thank you. Oh, it's defense. Lovely. Defense is something I can contribute to even though my Volt is garbage rank. Well, he's actually not. He's rank 30 and he, he does have a reactor on him. I just don't have very many leveled up mods on him. And the main reason for that is I'm encouraging new players not to rank up their mods unless they have doubles of them, because if you keep the base rank ones, then when you go to rank up a new frame, you can at least apply them sooner, which gives you a little bit more flexibility and capability when it comes to raising your mastery rank. A lot of are on you. Oh yes, this is Steel Meridian! This is so awesome! Thank you, Psychona! I needed that. Steel Meridian is my jam. Gotta get me some heck rep. Some rep for that scattering justice. Where are you people's at? Oh, I cannot wait until I get my wisp. See that enhanced fire rate there, guys, where we're just shooting ridiculously fast? That is wisp. Wisp is incredible. This is another reason I want to get her, because wisp makes bad weapons good. This weapon normally not so great. With Wisp Speed Boost, it's amazing. So good. Oh, it was Johnny Boy. Oh, thank you, Johnny Boy. You're awesome, my friend. Wisp, is that a new Warframe? Probably. Probably since the last time you played. Also, pro tip, if you run around the MOA spawning boxes, if you notice one flashing, you can hack it and spawn a friendly MOA that acts as a Spectre. Ooh, I think I've done that on accident once. Uh, so yeah, that is that is a very useful tip. Steel hates me. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I, I was hated by like four factions for the longest time before I realized that you could kind of cheat the system a little bit and be positive with four. And Steel was amongst them. What's really funny is I was actually raising Steel Meridian on my, my main account, and even as I was lowering their hatred of me, they were still sending kill squads after me. I'm like, guys, I'm trying. I'm trying to be better. Don't don't try to kill me. We could be friends. Uh, but yeah, so Wisp is a new buff frame. And basically, I, I haven't actually played her, but she has some crazy, crazy buffs, right? So one of them is a movement slash attack speed buff. That's why we're moving a little bit quicker. And that's why our gun's fire rate is so fast here. And it affects melee weapons as well. I could show you if I had one equipped, but I don't. Uh, and then the other buff that I know she has is she has one that causes electricity to radiate off of the frames and damage nearby enemies. That's what those two little th or those three little things floating around me are. Those are wisp buffs. She puts down these little thingy bobbers here, and I think once you walk through them, you pick up a little wispy guy that follows you, and each of those little wispy guys gives you a buff. You might even be able to know. We can't read the buff. I thought we might be able to read it. It's up in the top right corner. Nope, not like that either can hacking this one. Oh, okay. Uh, where is that? Probably over here somewhere. But yeah, Wisp is incredible. Wisp is a frame that I've wanted to get for a very, very long time. Uh, there's also some really, really cool story implications to Wisp that I, I am excited about. Uh, depending on how far you've gotten, I think I decided to only max out three. Uh, isn't four factions a pain to level? Uh, no, 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 no. So there's a very simple way to do it now. Uh, in fact, let me get somewhere safe and I can pop up a thing that'll show it. One is attack speed and movement speed. Two is health boost and regen. Three is electric shock. Oh, there we go. Thank you for that, Moonsword. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, so 
this is what I was going to show you, uh, Don Giovanni. If you go for these two combinations and you do basically 66% of your rep with either Red Veil and Steel Meridian and 33% of your rep with New Loker or Cephalon Suda, you can actually raise four different syndicates at an 88% efficiency. I'll leave that up for just a moment so you can look at it if you want to. Uh, essentially, it means that by just working on two of the syndicates because of who they're allied with and enemies with, you can basically raise four of them very easily. Which is super nice. Like, it, it honestly has been a blessing. I have access to so much more cool stuff now on my accounts. Uh, and my other account is primarily Red Veil New Loka. So this one is going to be Steel Meridian and Cephalon Suda, which will basically give me access to everything in the game across the two accounts. Which is really nice. Like, you obviously don't need access to everything, but that'll mean I can get all the cool Sindanas and things. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. Alrighty. Let's take some dudes out. Oh, I can't... That is an ally. <laughs> when you shoot at it and no health numbers pop up, that means it's an ally, good. Wake up. Uh, anyways, I'm super excited to test out Wisp. Can't do as much per day as you could otherwise. Right, but it takes longer, no. Uh, not really, not in my experience. And the reason I say it doesn't take longer in my experience, uh, Don Giovanni, is because when I do syndicates on my main account, I do them with Limbo with Loot Detector on. So I can see all of the potential nodes that those little bonus medallions and things spawn on. And then once I pop Limbo's four, it'll destroy all of the destructible ones, which makes it really, really simple for you to find the ones that give you bonus rep. So if you're diligent and you do all of those, you can still get a ton of rep every day with whichever faction you want. I'm trying to shoot all allies too. I'm good at this game. Hey, at least you're in good company, Psychana. We'll shoot allies together. Oh my gosh. I swear, I swear I'm shooting him, guys. I swear. His health bar doesn't move, but I swear I'm shooting him. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's, it's not a huge loss anyway. Like... The reality is this, right, Don Giovanni? If you were going to use your entire rep cap for one faction, it'll slow you down. But if you were going to do two factions that were allied anyways, like originally when I started out, I was doing New Loka and Perrin Sequence because they're allied. And it was like, oh, okay, that's fine. I was still doing two different ones and I was swapping them off here and there. If you're going to do that anyway, then you don't actually lose any speed by doing that or by doing the uh, two for four method. Like, comparably in that same chart on the wiki, you can actually see the other uh, combinations. And if you're just doing two that are allied with each other, it's actually way less efficient. Because of the amount of rep that you lose with other uh, syndicates. Although, if you're trying to farm kill squads, like if you want to have the most number of kill squads coming after you, it's probably more efficient to do two allied factions. But I'm all about collecting those sweet, sweet Sindanas and things, so... That's where it's at. Oh my god, guys. You know what the best thing I found out was yesterday? Like, I... I was really disappointed when they did the uh, Scarlet Spear thing because I bought the the thing that puts your clan emblem on your chest. And I put it on and it was just the basic clan emblem. And I was like, well, man, what's the point of this? You lose a little bit of speed, maybe 10%, so it's not a big deal. But yes, there's the kill squad farming to take into account. Yeah. But I mean, really, that's mostly going to give you... Um, what is it, like, uh, Spectres. And honestly, I don't use Spectres that much. I should probably use them more. So it's not a huge loss for me. <laughs> we need a Clem, Spry or a Clem Prime Spectre. Then I'll use Spectres. Yeah! Get toasted, boy! Okay, let's put our wall up so we can actually do damage. There we go. Oh, and the Brayton is max rank. It's over, y'all. It's over. Clem! Well, there is a Clem Spectre. I know, but I need the Clem Prime Spectre, cat. We need a Clem Prime Spectre to go with all my Prime Frames. Uh, yeah, anyways. I, I think it's uh, worth it to do the four, personally. But like I said, that's just because I want to get all the, the things. Oh, and the Clan Emblem, right? 
So I, I thought that when I bought the, the Gilded Clan emblem from the Scarlet Spear event, that all clans just had that sort of generic emblem. And then I was looking around online yesterday and they were like, here's where you go to upload your clan emblem. And I was like, what? What now? I, I can upload my own clan emblem? Oh my god, where do I sign? Uh, so I'm super excited about that. The only problem is it's going to cost me 150 plat, which I do not have. So I'm going to be a plat farmer for a little bit. I'm going to be a plat farmer for just a hot second because i got to get that mad plat. Although if I'm being honest, I probably have enough Veiled Riven mods left to sell for plat. Actually, even without the Veiled Riven mods, I have a really good mod for the... Or a, Really good Riven mod for the Corinth Prime I could probably sell for more than 150 plat, if I'm being honest. Maybe I'll do that. Ko's Clan Emblem is super dope. I think I actually have Ko's, uh, his glyph on... I don't think I have it on this account, but I have it on my main account. Ooh, Glassmaker Standing. Hello. Give me all that Glassmaker Standing. Uh, this is actually a nice touch to the new Nightwave as well. Because it spawns those Cephalite enemies... You actually are able to accrue Nightwave rep just by doing missions and killing stuff, which is new, and I really, really like that. I love the Corinth. I am not a fan of the Corinth Prime. I've heard that people are are mixed about the Corinth Prime. Is isn't it because the Corinth Prime you actually have to remote detonate the uh, alt fire? Is that what it is? Like it doesn't detonate on contact anymore. All right, let's take these guys out. I mean, honestly, we don't need to use the, the Brayton anymore, but it is the only gun we have. I'll just shock him. I'll just shock him so we can get some real damage done. In fact, let's have a fun time. Shock everybody. I like how I shot everywhere but his face. That Ooh, cryo rounds. Nice pickup. Nice, nice pickup. They had Nightwave enemies in Season 1. Oh, okay. I didn't know that, see, because I wasn't around then. But I, I do like that a lot more. For me, the Corinth is the classic pump action shoddy with individual show reloads that lot. The Prime doesn't have that. Oh, okay. How many Syndicate missions do you still need? Uh, I've got six left, so we may not be able to do it even with with everybody having their syndicate missions. I I thought I had access to more of them, but I only had access to the first Steel Meridian one because I haven't hit the next rank up with Steel Meridian yet. Uh, but I should be able to once I do because I think I have the Forma sitting around waiting. I got six more right on. There we go. You are a hero, Johnny Boy. I appreciate that. I very much appreciate that. And oh my gosh, the Brayton is done, guys. The Brayton is done. If we just make it through this mission, we can switch to a better primary. We also picked up cryo rounds here, which is really, really nice. Because I believe that will allow us to put together uh, some of the, the better hybrid damage types. I think we have electricity, and I think cold and electricity together makes... Wait, what does cold and electricity make? Cold and toxin is viral. Uh, cold and electricity is not radiation because heat and electricity is radiation. Oh, it's magnetic. That's right. When you forget that it makes magnetic. What's the energy pulse shoddy called again? That I do not know. There's a Gricotta Gunblade? Wait, what? Is there a Gricotta Gunblade? <laughs> that's an ally. <laughs> Once again, shooting allies. Psychana, ally shooting club for life. Uh, nice, got another redirection. So we can actually start to level some of our frame mods now because we have extras. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think that there is a laser, a laser shotty yet. Oh, cryo rounds is so nice. Cryo rounds is a huge, huge pickup because I don't think we had them before. Uh, it's obviously not great now because I don't have toxin yet. Arca is my BFF. Oh yes, for full-on Clemming. <laughs> I'm working on getting the Redeemer Prime on my main account right now. Uh, okay guys, give me one second. I have been standing for the first couple hours of this stream. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mute and turn my webcam off for a second because I have a desk that transitions from standing to sitting and I'm gonna switch it over to sitting so I can rest my legs for a minute. One
Okay, you guys let me know if the mic is problematic. I think it should be okay, but I might have to tilt it. There we go. That's probably a little bit better. I'm going to crash out. It is 2 a.m. for me and I'm tired. See all of you next time. Right on Moonsword later on, man. Folks, if you haven't, definitely go check out Moonsword's Twitch channel. I don't know why the caster didn't work, but uh, I'm going to throw a link to his channel or her channel. Sorry, I I'm not sure which. I didn't mean to be... Uh, I didn't mean to make an assumption. But there. Go check out Moonsword, folks. Thanks for that raid, Moonsword. I appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful rest. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and confirm this. <laughs> Are you talking about being kicked out of the Discord, Don Giovanni? Or which, which form of the Coalition? Because it's freaking everywhere. Oh, are you talking about the clan in game? Alrighty then. Okay. Let's get it on. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Oh, no, I didn't switch weapons. I didn't switch weapons. Oh, mistakes were made. Okay, it'll be fine. We'll get through this. Oh, it's a hostage rescue anyway. Boot. Press F to pay respects. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. The Warframe clan, that's what I figured. Oof. Yeah, I need Suda and Steel. Absolutely. Hi there, friends. Okay, let's see if we can... We're going to be the speedy runner for this one because... We basically get no value out of our weapon right now because I am a spaz and didn't swap weapons because I was busy switching my seat. Okay. There we go. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to open my wisp, guys. It's like Christmas. It's like Christmas. I cannot wait to unwrap my new wisp or my new Oberon. Uh, actually, on my main account, I'm excited for the Oberon Prime because I guess you can do, like, solo Eidolons with them. And I am all about that. Because I, like, I get nervous in Eidolon Hunt missions because I'm usually the most garbage player in the group. Not sure I can enter from here, but I'm going to try. Oh, I can. Beautiful. There we go. Here, take my secondary weapon that I don't have. There we go. Let's get out of here. You don't need a weapon, hostage. Oh my gosh, so like, when Vault and I play, we the rescue missions are the ones we make the most fun of, because legit, I handed the... Uh, the hostage a Kuba Nuker, and if you guys don't know what the Kuba Nuker is, sorry, I got something in like my peripheral view. It's like a mustache hair or something that's driving me crazy. Uh, anyways, so the Kuba Nuker is a laser weapon that basically does chain lightning, and it's super powerful, like to the point that it just mows down entire groups of enemies. And I gave it to the hostage one mission just to see if maybe they could hold their own. And I kid you not, as soon as I handed the Kuva Nuker, the best secondary weapon I've used in the game so far, immediately he you hear, Oh, I'm bleeding out! <laughs> and so we just, we mock the uh, hostages mercilessly because they are absolutely helpless. Ooh. Are those dual coal stars? Interesting. I spent one third of that stuck in a wall. I'm so good at this game. <laughs> Were you Gauze? Was that Gauze, Psychona? Wow, that was super, super fast. Much excite. Much excite. Trinity. Ah, okay. Trinity is one of those frames I'm still not super comfortable playing. I try to play her when I do Eidolon hunts, but I always feel like I do a bad job of it. Because I know, like, her job in an Eidolon hunt is supposed to be to uh, heal the lures so they don't die. And, like, I just feel like I, I press Blessing at the wrong time and I don't do the job right. You know what I mean? Uh, let's build the Ankyros. 
And let's also start building a couple other things just so we do have some backups. Uh, we'll build the Gorgon and the Heat Sword. Main reason is, since it's a double affinity weekend, we're going to want to have as many things as we can coming out of that. Or coming out of the foundry as quickly as possible. So I'm going to swap this back over to the Bolter and then re-equip our secondaries that we're leveling so we can get some of those done. Um, yes, there we go. I take her to ESO usually. That's the only time I'm really good at her. Oh, I haven't even done Elite Sanctuary Onslaught yet. Get the alternate Wisp helmet when you get Wisp. The normal Wisp head looks like... <laughs> where did you, uh, where do you get it? Is it a plat helmet or is it one of the ones you can get from like Nightwave or something? Oh, what am I doing? There's a mission being voted on. Yes, that. There we go. Nightwave? Sweet. I'll keep an eye out for that and snatch it up as soon as it's available. Man, I just, I love Wisp as a frame. Uh, like, so I, it's, it's tough because the things I love about her I don't want to talk about because they're kind of spoilery. Like, if you don't know anything about the Ropa list and where she comes from, then it is difficult to talk about because there are some very cool implications with Wisp. The implications are what I'm, I'm excited about with Wisp. I think Wisp is a very, very special type of frame. Uh, and I can't wait until we get like a Leverian for her. Uh, for those of you that haven't checked out the Leverian, it is pretty incredible. It is a, a great little thing to read the, or rather be told the stories of the frames. Ah, oh, yes. This is what real firepower feels like. Honestly, I didn't mod it though, so it's not hitting very hard at all, but that's okay. <laughs> I just like the sound of the bolter. It has a satisfying sound. I think it also pins things to the wall and her booty thick. <laughs> Not as thick as Hildren though. Hildren is the thickest. Ain't nobody got more junk in their trunk than Hildren does. Oof. There we go. Right in the face. Right in the face. And I really do like the uh, Bolter a lot, though. It's a very nice gun. I do not like this uh, Prisma Tetra. Wait, the Prisma Tetra is... That's your weapon, right? Let me check. Yeah. I haven't even used the Tetra at all yet. There's a lot... Like, I think the Corpus weapons are the weapons that I've used the least of. And I don't know why. I think it's just because a lot of them have electricity and uh, magnetic, and I don't usually bring electricity or magnetic damage to anything. Mainly because I spend more time fighting Infested and Grenier than I do fighting Corpus, I think. But I mean, with high-level Corpus content, I could see bringing the magnetic damage. I think when I was running around Orb Valis a lot, I would bring magnetic damage because the Corpus there are such a pain. But I mean, the problem with Corpus too is that once you get through the magnetic, they have shield or armor underneath anyway. So you're like, well, I guess I'll just bring corrosive instead and then take advantage of high fire rate weapons to burn down their shields. Alrighty then. Do I forget that because these are our missions that we can do, uh, I might be able to find emblems on the ground here. Something I should take into consideration. Hi there. Oh my god. I love the physics in this game when it launches them like 300 feet. Hello there, friends. Let me just go ahead and unload a few shots to the face. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and use my four here to stun everyone so that they're not killing me while I'm working them over. Beautiful. Uh, already the Bolter is at rank 6. I love it. We should be able to put some damage mods on as soon as we get out of here. Uh, yeah. Here. Here. Take my gun. There you go. Take the Bronco. Level that up for me, would you? Just, uh, you know, leave the affinity on the floor when you're done with it.
do to do. Y'all going down. Actually, you know what? I think the only Corpus weapon that I used consistently was the Glaxian and the Opticore Vandal, and that's just because of how they're obtained. Uh, the Opticore being something you can get from doing the Thermia event in Orvalis. It's actually an incredibly strong gun early on, because it's like just a really powerful beam weapon that comes with built-in magnetics. Uh, and then the Glaxian Vandal I got for watching, like, one of the... It might even have been Tenocon. I can't remember. Cat, you remember, right? What did the Glaxian Vandal come from? The Lens and Arca Plasma are uh, very good as well. You know what else is good is the Lanka, which I just started using on my main, and I'm like, wow, this thing is amazing. Uh, yeah, I haven't tried the Lens or the Arca Plasma, but I probably will in the future. The other thing, too, is like I primarily built weapons that built into other weapons so that I could conserve slots. It was a stream drop, drop, but I don't remember which. Yeah, I think it was the Railjack release stream, maybe? I can't say for sure, though. Oh, it's that time, y'all. <laughs> Here we go. Like, I dig the Brahma for the silliness, but the Arca is my go-to primary. The lens is like a Kuva Brahma. Oh, I think I've seen this. It's a bow that, like, has explosive stuff, right? Yes, there we go. All the booty shaking. And and in the back, Saikana is just like, y'all are thoughts. I'm going to meditate here. <laughs> but yeah, the Glaxian Vandal, I think it was the, the Empyrean release stream that I got that from. And you know what's funny is that uh, I'm going to meditate on my cat. Yes, like just on the top of it. Um, what's funny about that too, cat, is that on my main account, it still says the Glaxian Vandal is my most used weapon, even though I haven't used it in ages. Like I used it when I first started and then realized I didn't like it that much because it's not high damage. It's just constant pulse. Um, I should go back to it now, though, that I know more about modding. Like, I didn't understand how to mod when I was using it, so I wasn't getting the best value out of it, I don't think. Maybe I'll take another look at it, but I'm trying to, honestly, trying to get the Galaxian Vandal out of my most used primary slot. Like, I want something else there. <laughs> my most used secondaries are the Fang Primes because they came with the, the Twitch pack that came with, um, Ember. No, with Trinity Prime. It was Trinity Prime, Fang Prime, and Vectus Prime. And oh my god, I remember trying to use the Vectus early on. I made my Arca silent so I can stealth shotgun stuff in spy missions. It's hilariously silly. I haven't done much with the hushing mods, but I, I totally should. And actually, while we're talking about mods, I should go mod things real quick. Uh, let's see. So we've got eight slots here. Probably gonna do... If I can only do one... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We have a Bazarin, so we could do Cryo Rounds here for half price. And then we would still have five left that we could probably do a base serration with. Yup. Seems good. Uh, Alright, that works. And then the Bronco has eight more capacity, which I probably don't need anyway. Let's put Suppress on it just because. See how that does. Um, and then Volt, I actually do want to upgrade some stuff for. So give me... I, I'm I'm going to ready up in just one second, folks. I'm just uh, making some upgrade thing, choices on Volt. Uh, for Volt, though, I don't know which one is... Maybe Energy Max? Nah. I guess he's already got quite a bit upgraded. Oh, you know what would be nice, though? I'm going to put on Thief's Wit. Maybe I'll put on Thief's Wit and I'll actually mod that up so we get a ton of radar on it and see if that will let me find the uh, steel meridian things yep that works do that and I'll leave the other stuff alone for the moment silent explosive <laughs> spoiler Suda and steel still despise me just as much as before <laughs> when I finish leveling this tetra I'll grab the arca Silent explosive hush. See, that's what always was weird to me. I was like, I wonder, like, if you hush the Brahma, does it prevent them from realizing that you're murdering masses of them with explosives? <laughs> Seems kind of strange. Oh, this is the Lavarian thing, by the way. This is super cool. I just found out yesterday that you can get, like, the Prax cards from the Lavarian and use them to decorate your ship, so I'm super excited because now my, uh, my main's got, like, the Prax card for Ivara and Atlas up in his, uh, personal quarters. 
It forces them to fail their spot checks. That's insane. Grenade falls at their foot. I wonder where that fell out of the sky from. Herp a derp a der. It's bolter time. Oh yeah. So now now we have the ability to prove yourself. See where these different loot things are at. Uh, and I'm gonna see if we can potentially find you know what, I think Volts 4 actually breaks containers through walls and stuff, too. See if we can find some medallions. Say hello to my little electrocution. Oh, and this tile set has secrets. I love it. This tile set has secret rooms. This is another thing I found out about recently, was the Gas City secret rooms. I'm just running around, like, picking stuff up. I'll, I'll catch up with the team in just a moment. Mainly trying to see if I can find any of those emblem things. Doesn't look like it. Uh, but yeah, the Gas City secret rooms are incredible. Oh, we've got a waypoint here. I'm gonna go to the waypoint. I'm sure that somebody flagged something there that's worth grabbing, so I'm gonna go nab that. See what it is. The Bronco is rank 29 now. Oh, that was smooth as butter right there, that transition to the uh, cord. Oh, Gas City Secret Room, y'all. Okay. Uh, we gotta find switches. I mean, we don't have to do the Gas City Secret Room if you guys don't want to, but I'm all for it if you do. Because the mods that come out of this can actually be sold for a decent amount of plat, and even if you weren't considering that, uh, they also have some other benefits, like being able to get some cool Captura scenes and stuff like that. Now, the problem is, I don't know this particular Secret Room very well. Like, I'm trying to find the stuff. Okay, so it doesn't look like it's part of this tile. It's part of the next tile over. Interesting. So what we're looking for here is switches that have the symbols above them. I'm actually not seeing any of them here. Weird. Oh, there's one. Yep, there's one. Waypoint is marked already. Is there any others around here? So if it's part of this tile right here, then the stuff will be inside here. And we also have to find the thing that's preventing us from accessing those switches. If it's not specifically part of that tile, we might find stuff in here though. So I'm gonna look. Nope, it is not part of this tile because it wouldn't go out into that, I don't think. So it's gotta be up here. And there's a governor box that essentially keeps you from, wait, did I hear it? I think I hear it. So there's a governor box thing you have to shoot to make the uh, switches available. And I think I just heard it, but I can't say for sure. Like it makes a noise. Okay, there's the square. Oh, I think Kingdom Master's got it. There's glass resonance in your neighborhood. Oh, I found it. I found it, guys. I got it. Access controller's down. Woot! Okay. Access controller is down. We should be able to access the switches now if we can find them all. So it is empty square, triangle, full square, half moon. Uh, and we know that Half Moon is right here, so that's the last one we're going to hit. Uh, and I think that Empty Square was up here further. To do, let's go see if we can find it. I don't see it in here at all. And I'm not quite sure how far outside of the tile sets. So there's Empty Square. Now I'm curious whether there's one in here. Doesn't look like it though. 
No. Okay, so we've got empty square. We've got half circle. Oh, squares here. All right, I'm gonna go find Kingdom Master so I can figure out where the square one is on this. Wait, where is he? Oh, there he is. I see, I see him, I see him. Roger, roger. He's right over here. Oh, okay. So there's filled square. So all we're missing now is the triangle, and if we can find the triangle, we can open up this gas city hidden room, and I think I found it, maybe. Yup. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Psychona, can you hit the empty square and then run down to the half circle? And then, basically what we'll do is, uh, Psychona will get the empty square at the top, Kingdom Master will get the full square, I'll get the uh, triangle, and then everybody will blitz the, the half circle to finish it. So Psychana, on your mark, will hit the next one, so let us know. Alrighty. Seems like a plan. We got this, guys. Teamwork makes the dream work. Hitting it now. Okay. Kingdom, let me know when you've hit. Okay, I hit triangle. Now all we need is the last one. Oh, we did the wrong order. I was supposed to go second. Okay, that was my fault, guys. That was my fault. I messed it up. I totally messed that up. Yeah, I messed up the order. <laughs> I messed up the order. <laughs> All right, try it again. I'll go second. Okay, so as soon as Sykana tells us, I'm gonna tells us that she hit hers. I'm gonna hit mine. Actually, I don't even need her to tell me that she hit hers. As soon as she hits it, I'll see the timer pop up. Pressing it now. Okay. There we go. Now it's kingdom. Oh, I'm not going to make this. Oh, somehow. And we did it. Oh, it's spoiler mode. I, I'm going to look away while y'all spoiler mode the door. Because I can't do it. So I'm going to look over here. There's nothing happening behind me. There's nothing happening behind me at all. There's nothing there. Oh, yep, nothing. No nothing there. Alrighty, let's do it. Oh, are these guys glass guys now too? They spawned as glass guys, that's crazy. Ooh, another capture a scene. So sweet. Oh my gosh, the fact that they spawned as glass guys is crazy. Hello there, big thing that is spoilery that I don't want to necessarily show off, but I will because I'm going to shoot you. Okay, and then I'm going to hide because you're going to whoop me. Woot. Lovely job, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was great. I just found out about these the other day, and we went on like a farming spree doing them, me and, a, me and Balt did. And we, like, we got one mission where there was four of them in there. Like, in a row. I was just like, are you for real? And then we found out that you can get doubles of the, uh... The Captura scenes, and I was like, oh, sad times. Because I thought we were going to get almost all of them in that one run. Whoa! Oh my gosh, like a ninja. Ninja recovery there, y'all. Ninja recovery. Whew! 
Okay. Let's get this party started. That was actually way easier to cross than I expected it to be. I don't even remember what this mission was now because I got so distracted by the uh, the gas city doors. I freaking love the fact that there's stuff like that in this game. So, like, I wish they would do more of that, honestly. Like, I used to say that Lua was my favorite tile set because Lua has some puzzles built into it that are really cool. And I still feel that way. Like, I really, really love Lua as a tile set. But now Gas City has extra meaning for me. And I think they get that because they were showing that... Like, I don't know how many of you guys saw on the dev stream that they showed Protea. They also showed that they were going to be doing new, a new Corpus tile set. And that the new Corpus tile set had... Uh, had, like, those coins you could collect to do some more with it. And that, to me, is, is really smart. Like, that's how you really add some cool stuff to it. Especially because a lot of those things play into the lore. Like, I'm not sure what uh, the Halls of Enlightenment stood for in Lua, but you could say that that was where they tested frames and things like that. Uh, here in Gas City, those, those particular rooms do have a story meaning, which is really cool. Um, and then the Corpus rooms that they're working on where you can collect coins and do that separate sort of mission thing are also very, very cool and have some story behind them because they're supposed to fill in some of that gap of the cult of the corpus. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited for that kind of content. Like, that's the kind of stuff that I think DE needs to double down on and has a lot of value. Of course, there are probably a lot of people that have been playing this for five years that are going to be like, you don't know anything, noob. We want harder stuff. And I mean, there's no reason you can't have both. It does sound like they have some plans for a hard mode, though. That's going to be pretty cool. Um, so kudos to DE. I'm just, I'm, I'm actually very, very uh, impressed. Impressed is the right word. I'm very impressed with the direction that they've kind of taken in recent times, uh, especially with all the, the fire that they've come under for the last couple of releases. Yep, no worries, Psychona. You grab all the water you need. Yeah, welcome, beginners. I love this little thing. It's so neat. Do -do -do. Let's come over here. I'm actually gonna... Oh, I can't go in there. Not yet. Not yet. Personal quarters someday. Someday. Uh, let's check my profile real quick, because I'm curious about how much affinity we need for MR5. We're still about 20k away. Ooh, that's not a small gap. That is not a small gap. But that's okay. We'll get there. We'll get there. It'll be fine. Do, 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 Let's see. I wish I could run two instances of Warframe, because I would switch over and show you guys some stuff on my main, because I'm, like, super excited about some of the stuff that's, that's come through on him. But, uh, yeah, we're not quite able to do that, I don't think. Which is fine. I mean, that's that's a little bit much to ask anyway. Warframe is a very graphic-intensive game, and I'm sure I would, like, spike my stream by doing it. So, probably better not to, in the, the larger scope of things. Uh, Razorback Ciphers, we've got reactors we could build, we've got catalysts we could build. For Vauban, I need neural sensors and plastids. I should honestly build Rhino first, though. Like, if I'm, if I'm being honest, and this is going to be a beginner's guide, I should build Rhino before I build Vauban. Just because beginners are going to be able to get Rhino more consistently, and Rhino adds so much to the toolkit of a new player that it's insane. I mean, even just from the perspective of being able to farm credits in the index with him, Rhino just adds a lot. Although, honestly, lately I've been doing index with Limbo, and it's so good. Limbo is so good, guys. I, I freaking love Limbo. I think he's incredible. Uh, also, I know somebody, I can't remember who it was, but they were asking about Oberon and whether or not Oberon is really good. And uh, Oberon's actually much better than I realized. Oh, okay. We're ready to go. Yay! Yeah, Oberon is much, much better. Water got in a pet and pet a cat. Win win. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where mine are. Like, the cats have actually been pretty good today. It's kind of shocking. Normally, they're like all up in everybody's grill. 
I like to index as Mesa, sit there and brr anything that shows up. That's a good idea. I haven't tried that yet. Mainly because Mesa's kind of squishy, but maybe it's just the way that I've modded her out. Although I guess if you mod her correctly, her Shatter Shield gets like 90% damage reduction. Of course I will, Arbiters. Of course I will. Say hello to my little Boltor. Yeah, I think we have some mods on the Boltor now because it seems to be hitting a lot harder. I mean, these guys are also slightly lower level than the last ones we fought as well. But I definitely think that we put some mods on. I can't remember now. I'm like, I'm so harebrained sometimes, guys. It, it's really bad. But I mean, in my defense, I am trying to keep track of, of stream and everything else all at the same time. I don't know. I, I'm just harebrained. There's no defense. <laughs> I'm way too excited about way too many things in Warframe. That's, that's the real problem. Hello, friends. Let me just pop you up in the air and give you a little slashy slash. Ooh, power cells. All right, where is this excavator at? Hello, excavator. I've got a little power cell for you. Here's another one, too. Reload. I love the reloading animation of the Voltor, too. It just looks great. Okay, time to go over here. God, I love when they fly. It's so great. Ragdoll physics more, please. Okay. Okay, grab this up real quick. Another battery cell in there to keep it nice and healthy. And we'll just take out a couple more dudes. All the dudes dying with the bolters. Okay, somebody's shooting arrows. I thought those were bolters, like bolts from the bolter, like sticking into them. I don't know, maybe they are. Maybe they are, because I know you can stick people. Oh, I think they are. Because, yeah, you can stick people to the wall with the bolter, which is really funny. Do do get shanked. Hi there. Okay. Uh oh. Why you gotta do this? Why'd you jump up into the ceiling where I can't see you? There we go. Nice and simple. Oh, he's up here now. Hi there. Oops, host migration. I disconnected. Rejoining squad. No worries, man. No worries. If you're able to rejoin, awesome. Um, every time I've had other people host migrate, like, they haven't been able to rejoin, which has always been really sad. Oh, I just... <laughs> I'm like reading chat while I jump over things. Don't jump and read, guys. Don't jump and read. It doesn't end well. Okay. Let's go over here. Grab up the thingamabobs and drop them on down. Oh, we got a new Kavat mod as well. Sharpen Claws. That's a nice damage mod for your Kavats. It's going to be quite a while before we get a Kavat on this account, but we will roll the dice when we do and hope that we get a Smita Kavat the very first go. Because uh, I, I live for my Smita Kavat, no joke. Saikano, what kind of content do you bring your crit Kavat into? Do you just bring your crit Kavat into everything in general, or do you like... Bring it for content where you're not super worried about getting extra resource drops or what. Because, like, I know everybody does kind of different stuff. I don't usually bring my crit Kavat. Ah, uh, okay. Sanga is my loot kitty. There you go. 
I was just wondering, because I was like, man, I bring my Smita Kavat everywhere. Like, that is my go-to. The only time I don't have the Smita Kavat is if I am trying to specifically grind up another companion for some affinity. And since I, I hit, like, MR16 on my main account, I don't even worry about affinity anymore. Like, I don't touch it, because... There's, I don't think, anything left in the game that has a higher requirement than that. Husband says he brings his to Eidolons. Oh, that's smart. That's really, really smart, actually. Wow, that, I didn't even think about that. Do the do the Smita Kavats cause Eidolons to, or the, the Vomilus to drop additional cores, though? Because if it increases your core drops, I think the Smita Kavats still pretty... Well, I guess if you're already capped out on cores and you're just trying to speed up the Eidolon hunt, that makes more sense. See, that's what I was wondering. I was like, there's got to be a scenario in which you don't bring the Smita Kavat. And I think the scenario is for stuff like that, where you're literally trying to farm the best arcane, so you're just trying to get it done as quickly as possible, and you're not really worried about getting extra intact sentient cores. That makes sense. Oh my gosh, I finally upgraded my amp on my main, and I did the wrong one. Oh, okay. Hello, hello. Oh, they got frozen, broke. That always reminds me of Demolition Man. If you've... I, I might be dating myself by talking about that movie, but if you've ever seen Demolition Man, when dudes get frozen by frost and then shatter, it always reminds me of Demolition Man. Hello, friends. Let me just go ahead and do this. Hi. Enjoy the shock. There we go. <laughs> I love when they get stuck to stuff. I'm, I'm such a sucker for the, uh, the physics and the getting stuck to things. It, like, always makes me giggle. I'm, I'm terribly immature with that. Somewhere over by WP3 is a Kavat incubator thing. Oh, nice, I just scooped it up. Thank you for that, Psychon. I appreciate that. Alrighty then, wow. I just got Valorant flashbacks. <laughs> like, for some reason, the doorway got really dark for a second, and it looked like the uh, spike going off in Valorant, and I was like, what is going on right now? I think that's code for I've played too much Valorant with B in the last few days. All right, let's end these dudes. And the Bronco is capped out. Lovely. We should be able to start working on the AK Bronco, which we should already be able to use because we are MR4. Oh, the AK Bronco is so much more usable than the regular Bronco. That two shots is just so few. Okay, I'm going to drop this and head to extraction. Ooh, I can swap frames after this. Isn't that a good feeling when you're, like, grinding something up and you're like, yes, I can move on to the things that I enjoy more. What frame are you doing next? Demolition Man, I hear opinions on the movie can be a bit split. Dang good rat burgers, though. Dude. <laughs> I, that movie was, like, one of my favorite in my childhood. I absolutely loved that. I loved Wesley Snipes' character in that movie. Heated charge, sharpened claws. Alright. That Kavat segment there, though, that's gonna be mm -mm good. Not sure yet who I'll bring. It'll be a surprise for all of us. Excellent. Uh, I am gonna probably take the Bronco off. I don't think I have anything to replace it. Oh, I do. I have the Kunais. The Mark I Kunais. I am going to swap on the Mark I Kunais. And once we swap on the Mark I Kunais, I'm going to go grab a blueprint for the AK Bronco and for another Bronco. Let's go Bronco. Yep. Do I already have the blueprint for the Bronco? Category weapons, secondary weapons. Why does it no show the Bronco? I must already have it. That's weird. Mm. 
No. Okay. Oh, it's because it's hiding mastered. That's why. That's why it's hiding mastered. And it's hiding owned. There we go. You have hide owned turned on. Yep, yep, yep. I am bringing a very gross, fleshy fiend. Is this Nidus? Did you finish Nidus? It's Nidus time. Oh man, I can't wait to like... I'm reasonably sure that Nidus is farmed from the last planet, like the all V thing, so that's going to be one of the big farms I've got to do still. Uh, I was excited to to be able to do the... Oh, I lack Neurodes. Sad times. Okay. I was excited to be able to do the farm for um, Wisp, because I wasn't expecting to be able to tackle that either. And being able to is just like a really, really like nice surprise. There we go. That'll work. Kunai's with damage and crit chance. Love it. Cat helped me get the last piece on my birthday. Oh, that's an awesome birthday present. Well done, Cat. Well done. Ooh, sorry, guys. I don't know why I'm so yawny today. I like maybe I haven't been sleeping enough lately. Come to think of it, I was up kind of late. Um. So to do that all at V node, you have to get the all at V like coordinates and things first, right? Like I still have to do the quest, I think, that prefaces that. You are here to infiltrate data vaults and retrieve sensitive enemy information. Oh, spy mission. Sweet. Your path has we have kunais that are actually pretty decent. Even though they're Mark 1s. Oh, I missed that stealth kill. That would have been nice. <laughs> we'll just kunai him very slowly. Very, very slowly. There we go. That was a Wukong with a heck. Oh, I can, like, depending on the planet, I can do spy missions now, too. I've actually had to lear learn how to do them. Mainly from doing the this guide, because before that, I just kind of skipped over spy missions. I didn't do them very much. But I started, like, grinding them on the early planets, because there is a really decent chance to get some of the basic mods from them. I was like, ooh, this is a, a cool opportunity. Yeah, like, this one, I know. Yeah, this one is super easy. Like a boss. There we go. You a pro or newbie? Uh, Scarlet Spell, I am a idiot savant. So both? Only like the worst of both. Yeah. Th that's how we do. I know enough to be dangerous to myself and others. <laughs> how are you today, Scarlet Spell? Oh my gosh, speaking of knowing enough to be dangerous to others, a friend bought me a bar as a gift when I started playing, so I never learned. <laughs> that's, that's totally understandable. Like, I struggled a little bit when I first... Uh, first started playing without Inaros because he gives you such a handicap. People disagree about the Savant part. Gee, thanks, Cat. Gee, thanks. I appreciate that. Such kind words from a dear, dear friend. Uh, Alright, so B is over there. Is somebody already at B? No, it looks like not. So I'm going to jet over there with my speed boost. Hello, friends. Goodbye. Oh, that was such a fun execution. Okay, so this one, I don't actually know that well. Uh, so this will be interesting right here. Oh, well, that's a good sign. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I remember this. This is the trick right here. You just have to watch these stupid things. Then you can drop through here. Get 
And look at that. Can you just die real quick so that I can go ahead and open this? Okay, thanks. Oh no. Oh no. Yes, there we go. I was like, don't mess this part up. Don't mess this part up. That would be horrendous. What frames and weapons do you have? Uh, this is my new player account that I'm using for a beginner's guide. So it's just basically got Volt and some of the basic stuff. Right now we're using dual Skanas and Bolters. On my main, though, I've pretty much collected all of the currently available Primes and a few others. The only Primes I'm missing from the currently available Primes, uh, as far as frames go, on my main account is Equinox. And then I think there's one more. I have Atlas, I have Oberon, or I'm building Oberon. Uh, I have Necros. I have a lot. I'm not gonna lie, I'm generally a complete idiot at playing Warframe. <laughs> wow, Cat, don't don't go too easy on yourself there. Um, yeah, I guess we just head to the exit now. I don't know why I'm blasting around. I was trying to remember which primes I'm missing. I know I need Equinox. I can't think of any others from the currently available primes that I don't have, because I just got Titania a little bit ago. Yeah, I mean, it's... I... Oh, that's the wrong ability. <laughs> this is why I'm an idiot savant. Um, so yeah, I started playing about four months ago, probably. And I really, really got into it. Why? Okay, so this is not me. This is not me. It is constantly moving where that marker is. I swear it's not my fault, guys. Um, even my clone is dancing. <laughs> that's awesome. So I'm also building Wisp right now, which doesn't have a Prime, or I would go for the Prime on that. I like to collect Primes. That's that's why I have a ton of the frames that are Primed out. I just built Mesa Prime a little bit ago, so I have her. I can't think of any other Primes than Equinox that are currently available that I don't have, because I think Oberon and Equinox were the two I was missing, uh, and I just got Oberon. It's not even done yet. It's building. In fact, I can check how... Oh, no. I touched the third rail, guys. I touched the third rail. See, this is what I mean. There's a marker on the screen, and just like me, you take three wrong turns before taking the right. Well, that's also because that marker moves. That's why I opened the mini-map there, because it actually helps a lot. Um, let me take a look here real quick at my... This is how addicted I am to Warframe, guys. I actually have the Foundry app on my phone so that I can, I can keep an eye on all my things that are building. I've also got a Zephyr and a Banshee that are sitting in my foundry fully cooked waiting to be pulled out that I haven't pulled out yet because I realized after I built them that there is a Banshee Prime and a Zephyr Prime. So I'm kind of waiting to see if I can get those because I'm a Prime Collector. Don't judge me. <laughs> uh, so in progress right now, I have Oberon Prime and Wisp and they're quite a ways away. It looks like there's two days left on Oberon and a little bit over that on Wisp, sadly, because I can't wait to crack Wisp open. They are vaulted, though. I know they're vaulted. I know they're vaulted, but let me tell you a secret, Johnny Boy. I get vaulted crap from people just doing random relics all the time. Like, it's not even funny. I have a Valker Prime blueprint. I have a Vobin Prime relic. I don't know where that came from. Like, how did I even get that? Um, there, there's... People crack vaulted relics sometimes just because they have them stored up and they don't think about it or care. And I've gotten so many vaulted prime blueprints from it that like I'm holding out on the Banshee and the Zephyr because I'm like, I might, I might just get it, I might. And I think I actually have some Zephyr prime pieces. Your husband does that? Psychana, Psychana, hook a brother up. Call me when you guys are relic grinding. I'm there, I'm there. Says a horde of random relics. I don't even know how I got the Vobon relics. Okay, so yes, the syndicates are done. We got our two weapon slots unlocked, that's awesome. Well, if you already got all the parts in it, no reason to hang on. This is true, except for one thing, Cat. Like, I have leftover relics with Limbo and stuff in it on my main account, and I hoard those and, like, crack them very sparingly, mainly to try to get pieces to sell for Plat, because once they go Vault, they sell for much more. Well, he is out of Vobon. He might have some Zephyr, but I need to ask. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just... I'm kidding. I was just saying, if he's going to crack Vaulted stuff, I got this. I got all the Prime Frame now, I'm just missing Loki Prime. Oh, I can't wait for Tenocon, guys. 
Baro Takir is going to open up his shop and I am going to be there with Dukats plenty. It occurred to me that he's going to have all of the Prime mods. All of the Primed mods. All of them, guys. E everything. All the ones that I've been waiting for him to have that he never has, he's going to have them all. So between now and Tenocon, my goal is to farm as many Dukats as humanly possible. Uh, anyways, that, that'll be a fun experience. Okay, so... Eximus enemies. Need to break so many relics. Yeah, yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm like, crack all the relics, take all the Dukats. Uh, so where do we go for Eximus en enemies? Anybody, anybody have any tricks for us getting a ton of Eximus enemies? I wish I had nightmares unlocked. If I had nightmares... Oh, isn't there a nightmare where all the enemies that spawn are Eximus? Does anybody have a nightmare with Eximus enemies? I'm like, Arcwing missions off from having nightmare mode here. Find the Corpus Intel for the Arcwing. That's sorty stuff, I think? Oh, you're right, that is sorty stuff. That's right, it's not nightmare, it's sorty. Darn. Darn, that would have been perfect. All the Eximus. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Sanctuary Onslaught's a good idea. I don't know if I have access to it yet because it doesn't show up. Maybe I just need to go talk to him. I'm going to head to one of the relays and talk to Samaris. I think I wasn't high enough MR before. I think you have to be MR4 or 5 to act or access Sanctuary Onslaught. But I think it was 4. So I should have access now. Yeah, I, I am a massive uh, Prime collector, though. Like, I can't wait to get Redeemer Prime. I've already got... Orthos Prime is amazing. Orthos Prime is amazing, guys. I That staff is whoa-ho-ho good. Uh, so is Graham Prime. I've been really, really pleased with Graham Prime. Really pleased with, pleased with Rubico Prime. So how many ducats do you have? I have no idea. It, I don't know that I'll even be able to survive an Elite Sanctuary Onslaught. I've never actually done Elite Sanctuary Onslaught. I've only done Basic Sanctuary Onslaught before. Let me bring my nuke frame if we are going ESO. Alright, if we're going ESO, y'all... I'm... You guys realize if we're going ESO, I'm going to be probably totally useless, but I'm down. I'm down to do this. Um, and Don Giovanni, I think I'm strapped on Dukats right now because the last time Baro Takir came to, or Baro Katir Takir came to town, I burned through a ton of them. Your dedication to the sanctuary. Remind me of my targets. I wish to attempt Sanctuary Onslaught. Oh, I can't do it, guys. No Sanctuary Onslaught for me. I am too much of a scrub. Ooh, this guy has, like, War War. Knowledge must be earned, Tenno. Look at that war war right there. That's a pretty cool weapon. Um, okay. So, yeah. There is no Sanctuary Onslaught in real goods future. Planning on just buying the mods for yourself or to sell them? Uh, I'm not planning on selling them. I, I want to collect them for myself first. And then if I have Dukats afterwards, I might buy a few extra to sell. Can we taxi you? You can try, but I think Sanctuary Onslaught will just throw me out. I think I've tried it, um, but you can try taxiing me. Did you leave on purpose or no? Because I can invite you back, uh, Johnny Boy. Yeah, you can't taxi into ESO. That's that's what I thought. You can't taxi into ESO. You have to actually be able to get into it. Uh, but, I mean, we're, I'm one mastery rank out, so it's not too bad. You guys okay with doing some Cetus bounties, maybe? We could, we could do Cetus bounties. We could do Cetus bounties and get some Gara pieces and potentially some Plastids so that I can build Rhino. Sweet. Let's go do some Cetus bounties. Please be day. It's day in 33 minutes. Okay. Did I say Cetus? I meant Fortuna. You made me do it. I just started a new account doing the intro mission now. Oh, that's awesome, Don Giovanni. Um, when you, when you hit MR5, if you need a cheap clan to pick up your um, Arcwing launcher and stuff like that from, hit me up. I made a clan just for new players to come in, buy up all their stuff cheap, and then you can go on and find a, a long-term, more meaningful clan. One of which I am starting, by the way. In fact, in fact, I should do this. 
Oh no, not invite the clan. You alliance. Uh, management, invite clan. Clan name is Gamer Under Development. There. Okay. Sweet. Uh, anyways, so yeah, we we will have that as an option. Did I lose everybody here? Let me re-invite everyone. There's alliances? What's that? Um, okay, so alliances, from my understanding, were originally added as ways for clans to work together, and that was at a time when primarily they were doing that because there was PvP Dark Sectors. Dark Sectors are nodes on the map that give additional rewards and things, uh, and usually they're against Infested. Those used to be PvP nodes that could actually be captured and held by alliances who would then generate additional resources from them. Uh, but a while back they changed that, so now they are just PvE nodes, and alliances no longer serve the purpose of warring over that. So, basically, alliances now are just ways to group clans. Uh, which is, you know, not bad. It's nice to have a larger overarching structure, potentially. In my case, I like it because I've got the new clan that is just for allowing new players to come in and get all their stuff, and then I've got a larger clan that I'm going to be building that is for everybody to live in. I'm going to do some sortie first. Right on. No worries at all, Johnny boy. Good luck on your sorties. Uh, okay. So, Solaris United standing is very low. Very low. Let's see what bounties we can get here. We're looking for plastids. Uh, we wouldn't mind getting Garuda pieces. I've not actually played Garuda before, so she could be kind of fun. So I'm not seeing plastids here. Uh, not seeing plastids here. Synth charges here. That's not necessarily something we're after. Are there any plastids available? No? No, no plastids? No plastids. Alright. Tellurium. Okay, so I guess if there's no plastids, what else can we get here that's actually worth it? Uh, and head to bed after that. No worries, Johnny Boy. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate all the help. Yeah, that was that was awesome. Thank you for hauling us through Syndicate Thangs. That was incredible. Um, okay. So what do we need to rank right. up with you know Solaris U then? Because that's actually not bad. We need training bonds, so we'll just take a mission that has training bonds. Basically just kind of killing time until Cetus opens back up because that's going to have stuff that I need more. This is also why I recommend that new players focus more on Cetus bounties than on Fortuna bounties. Because Fortuna bounties are generally going to provide you with less that you need early on. Uh, they're, they're much more tilted towards unique things that are related to Fortuna. Whereas Cetus stuff is very, very much going to help you as you progress. And Nidus looks cool. Nidus is another one of those really cool story frames that I'm intrigued by. Alrighty, it's time to snowboard. Or hoverboard. I love my hoverboard. Uh, even though I'm not perfect at it. Give me a sec. Oh, no worries, no worries. I'm just gonna hoverboard around. Yeah, Tony Hawk's Pro, uh, Pro Tenno. Oh yeah, look at that. That sweet, sweet grind. Into a front flip, back flip, there we go. Beautiful. For some reason, Twitch keeps dying on me at the moment. Oh, I'm sorry, Cat, that's no fun. Don Giovanni, have you seen the K-Drive, man? Was the K-Drive around when you left? This this is what it's all about right here, folks. The K-Drive, and actually, this is one of the best ways you can grind rep with the Vent Kids right here. Okay, let's head to the mission now. I was just messing around. Uh... Psychana has the much better form of transportation, the Arcwing, which is something that we'll be working on for the Beginner's Guide next week. We're going to be getting people through the Arcwing launcher construction, and that should allow them to get around the open world missions a lot more easily, which is great. Mesa's support build, focus on duration and survivability, but lower your damage output. Interesting. I'm going to take a look at that, because my Mesa has terrible survivability, but ridiculous damage output. Hi there. 
Oh, just pulled him off. Mesa glass cannon build. I'll take a look at that one too. Um, I've got a pretty good handle on the, the glass cannon -y Mesa anyway. Like, because it's primarily just me focusing on ability power and efficiency so that you can keep her in regulators longer. Uh, but I'm also... I just got the stupid thing off my foot. Stupid low jack. Oh! <laughs> yeah, you got you got tired of the Vor low jack. That's actually a perfect definition of what the, uh, the thing was. The Ascaris, that's what it's called. Because Warframe does such a good job of introing you to what all that is, right? Like, you're just like, what the hell is an Ascaris? I don't know. Oh, you have to be in the Orbiter to view that. Okay. I'll check it out after then. Hello, friend. We just toast you up a little bit. Uh, Grant, when I get out of here, let me know your, like, send me your name either on, you know, on any form of messenger. You can honestly send it to me on, uh, Messenger Messenger if you want. Mesa gun go brrrr! <laughs> you don't know what an Ascaris is, noob. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> When they're like, these are the Grenier, and this is an Ascaris, and you're like, what the hell is any of this? Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. I'll uh, invite you after this, and we, we can come help you with some stuff, too. Oh, I love the reload mechanism on the Boltor. It's got, like, those two horns that you just pull up. Uh, actually, while you're at it, Grant, you might want to knock out... Like, if you can get through the beginning tutorial... We might have to... You might have to be through a certain part of that for us to be able to group with you, too. I can't remember for certain. Um, but yeah, if you continue the beginner tutorial when we're out of here, I should be able to invite you and we can go do some things. Or we can help you with nodes or whatever. Let's do a front-flipping, back-flipping, side-to-side monkey twist thing. I just made that up, by the way. Oh, yeah! Grab the nose of that board. <laughs> I love the K- Ah, oh, there we go. K-Drive riding. Yeah. Enjoying after you kill Vor. Oh, okay. So you gotta you gotta make it through the uh, beginning, probably, but I'll let you know. I'm taking a smoke break. No worries. No worries, man. Uh, so when you do get past killing Vor Grant, that's when we'll be able to join you. I always forget how far you have to go in that to be able to group up with people. Wham! I wish you could... Oh, I think you can, actually. I think there's a mod that makes it so that when you land hard with the K-Drive, you wreck people. That would be great. Uh, Orb Valis. A great place to run missions if you're Volt. Considering that their drones basically insta-die to your shock. I should probably take that Loot Radar mod off and put back on my Flawed Intensify, though, so that I have a little bit more... Or my flawed streamline. So I have a little bit more efficiency with it. Because I am running out of juice very, very quickly here. Hey, look here, man. Look here. You don't want none. Y'all don't want none. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know you could shoot the uh, drone off their back before they put it out and prevent them from putting it out at all. That's kind of nice. Oh, and we are just racking up the new rifle mods here. This is actually kind of great. Point Strike going to be a very useful pickup. Uh, we are basically moving closer and closer to being able to build for crit. Which is really, really good early on. Early on, you're going to struggle more to build good strat uh, stratus, good status weapons than you are uh, good crit weapons. Crit weapons are relatively easy to build out because you just max out the crit mod and the crit damage mod. And both of those mods are fairly easy to obtain for every weapon. Uh, the status mods are a little bit tougher because for status to be super effective, you usually need a couple of the gold 6060 mods and those can be a lot harder to acquire. Uh, even on my main account, there's gold 6060 mods that I'm missing. Uh, Kavan or, uh, that. Psychona is... What was I going to say? She's scumming it, or slumming it. There we go. Psychana is slumming it with us on the K-Drive. And up we go. Can we hit it? Oh, look at that. Slight grind onto the uh, the post right there. Oh, we just need to loot credits here. This will be easy. Hello, friend. Get shocked. 
Reload in progress. And I really like the des like the visual design of the Tenno weapons is really cool to me. I like the visual design of most of the weapons though. Some of the the Grenier weapons, I'm like, this is kind of basic looking, but whatever. Oh, credit cash, that's something. A little bit of rep there. Woody woo woo. And airborne grinds. For not a whole lot. All electric 6060 mods only drop from borrow, I think. Not sure if they drop from spy mission or not. You might be right there, because I don't think I've ever seen an electric 6060 mod. Uh, but you know what? There is an easy way to find out. I might look that up on the wiki real quick. Because I'm pretty sure I've never seen the electric 6060. I know the toxic 6060s, all of them drop from... Uh, um, Vor, Corrupted Vor in the Void, and I know that the Fire one for Melee is available from the early Spy missions. I'm not sure about the Electric, though. Let's check. Let's check, guys. Give me one second. I want to I wanna see this. Warframe mods. Uh, let's pop over here. Do, 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 do. And I guess I could show the window. Let me double check and make sure that that is safe to do. Uh, sometimes window capture can be really funky, so I want to make sure that this... This is showing the right window. Okay, it is. Perfect. So we'll transition over to this, and I will make this a little bit of a lesson about how to uh, look up mods and things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for mods, and we'll go for weapon mods, primaries, uh, and we're basically looking for... I guess it'd actually be under Assault Rifle. is it? So Tainted Mag here is not what I'm... Wait, is this showing us Corrupted Mods or All Mods? I mean, we could sort by Rarity. That would actually help, probably. Uh, hydraulic Gauge, Def Tempo... Huh. This is not all the Weapon Mods. Finally, it's running again. Right on, Cat. Uh, yeah, this is weird. This is not all the Weapon Mods, for sure. Maybe it's under Rifle. It's probably just under Rifle. Yeah, it's not under Assault Rifle, it's just under Rifle. Um, okay. So where are you? Mod of mods that we are seeking. Rhyme Rounds is the cold one. Uh, so... Thermite Rounds is the hot one. So I'm guessing that they're all named Rounds? Something Rounds? No, High Voltage. Here it is. Uh, is that a Conclave mod? comes from Sabotage Hive, and from Events, and from Borrow Kateer. So, yeah. You can get it from Borrow, but you can also get it from Sabotage Hive missions. In the C rotation at a 4% drop rate. Which is basically not, not gonna happen very often. Uh, so yeah. What are you looking for? I was just looking for the 60-60 mods for electricity. Uh, we could probably do this one. Sorry, Psychona. I was I was just browsing the uh, 6060 mods for a second to see if they were only available from Borrow. All right, there we go. So yeah, the 6060s are available from high-end missions. Uh, that's good though. That's good to know. So the the toxin ones, I know for a fact you get from Corrupted Boar. I think spy missions are where you get the cold and heat ones, and it looks like the electricity ones come from Sabotage Hive, which is already an interesting thing, because Hive missions are, are a different kind of animal. They really are. Okay, let's pop up, pop up, drop up, let's go. Where are we on time? Okay, just, just checking my time. All right, let's find some dead bodies. <laughs> like how I just threw the K-Drive through the air, like, bye K-Drive, see you later. Oh, all right, Psychon already checking that one. And let's check this one. Oh, wow, I didn't know the snow actually, like, makes a visual effect on you. That's kind of cool. I've never noticed that. I wonder if that's from driving the K-Drive through the snow. 
specifically. Oh, ow. I think there's actually a mod that makes it so that you can jump off your K-Drive like that and launch it into somebody. Okay, so we do need to find the last body. Oh, is that it right there? It is. Hello there. You check the last body there, and that should get us on to the next one. Investigate the area. Sounds good. Hey, hey, bye-bye. Oh, wow, look at that. Like, yeah, everybody else is in the arc wing. So by the time we get there, this part of the mission will probably be over. I do want to say this, though. If you're a new player and you're taking bounties and you only have the K-Drive to get around and everybody else is finishing the missions before you get there, don't sweat it. Just look at it for what it is. Free gains. Absolutely free gains. And if anybody complains, you can literally just be like, Look, man, I have the K-Drive. If you can't wait, that's your problem. Okay, cool. We are all set. And we can now actually use abilities because we're not all messed up from our K-Drive crash either. Data key looted. Hack time is reduced. Okay, let's see if we can find some more data keys when they start dropping taxmen. There's a taxman ship right there. Potential for a data key coming in. Yep, there it is. And the data key has been looted. On to the next one. Oh my gosh. Nidus' abilities are the things that like... Yeah, 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 yeah. There are special sites for things like that. Doo -doo -doo. Let's go. Hello, friends. Ooh, Pistol Gambit. I think we already had that, though, so not that big of a pickup. I always get excited about mods. It's really silly, but I'm always just like, oh, I can use that. I can do this with that. Um, and as you get further in the game, it actually becomes apparent that there's some value to having mods, like a version of a mod at every single charge level. Obviously, you're not going to do that with st something like Prime mods. But for those crit mods, having one that's at every single rank so they have different charge amounts so that you can use them more flexibly is actually a really cool premise. Wow, I think somebody just like gauzed through him, but I can't say for sure that's what happened. I just saw a blur and he was gone. So I I'm not sure how they killed that guy, but I, I want to say they gauzed through him. Who's even with us? Oh, Ivara. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know how that guy went down. Did Ivara just go straight through him? Get shocked. And then finished. Haha. -ha. Uh, Bolter is rank 18 right now, which is lovely. More enemies coming in on a blue cloud. Let's go find them. Hi there. Ooh, Shelter Debt Bonds. That's actually a really nice pickup. You need quite a few of those to max out your rep with uh, Vox Solaris. Or not Vox Solaris, but rather Solaris United. And there we go. Point Strike. Another crit mod. Wow, I guess maybe we should recommend that new players run these just so they can pick those up. Because those seem to drop really, really frequently here. Oh, I thought that was mine. I was going to jump on somebody else's K-Drive. Nope, mine is too scrubby to look that cool. Let's go. I cannot wait to... That's one thing I don't have on my main account that I've been working on is building a custom K-Drive. I want it so bad, guys. I want it so bad. Especially since the last intermission had a uh, K-Drive design you could put on the bottom of your K-Drive. You know the one thing they could do to K-Drive, though, to make it perfect for me? The one thing they could do is make it so that if you have a picture on your K-Drive and you grind, it scratches up the picture. It's like a badge of honor right there. I want it. I want it bad. Wow. Okay. Well, when we get there, the mission may already be mostly over, but that's alright. I'm not gonna complain. I'm just going to enjoy the free rewards. Do, 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 do. 
let's get on over there. Oh, ow. <laughs> that was not a good landing. Cat, you don't happen to still be in Warframe right now, do you? If you are, uh, let me let me know if uh, no, I quit out of the game. All right, I was just gonna have you see if uh, Cetus was still on night. It's probably been long enough that we can go do Cetus stuff. I'm hoping. Want to get Cetus stuff done because then I can build Gara and show new players how to use her to basically like Gara is so strong, so 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 strong. Gara is. A content devourer. Uh, you do have to be careful, of course, of the nullifiers. The nullifiers do make her problematic. No, we can just go bounties there at night till it's day. I can't, like, I don't have a spoiler mode to do bounties there at night. Oh, wait, can you do the day bounties at night there? I didn't even think about that. I always just do the day bounties during the day. Day is in 11 minutes. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Thank you, Johnny boy. Appreciate that. I'm gonna dumpster that guy. And you can do bounties at night. Oh, I didn't realize you could do the day bounties at night. That's freaking awesome. Hello there, friend. Oh my god! <laughs> Psychona, that was incredible. Nidus was like, let me introduce you to tentacles. Oof, I'm down. Thank you. <laughs> Nidus' frame has a very intriguing design. Uh, Lith S9 Relic has been acquired. Awesome. Ooh, and Kinetic Ricochet for the Tetra. I like how he just kicked you and then fell over. He was like, I'm going to be rude to you and then die. Let's head on over here. Ugh. Sorry, guys. I don't know why I'm yawning so hard. I guess yawning is actually the body's reaction to not having enough oxygen. And when I stream and stuff, I talk an awful lot. So I think it's because of that. Like, I, I feel like maybe it's just for me talking a lot during stream. Uh, okay. Enemies inside. Oh, I love that grab. That was a sweet, sweet front side clutch. Oh boy, we're getting containers. This I can do well as Frost. Or as Volt. I am not Frost, I am Volt. Frost is a different frame. My bad, y'all. And yeah, Nidus, Nidus would find a good home in Arkham. Oof. Did we not get this yet? Okay, there we go. Oh. Ivara's on that one, so we're gonna come over here. Uh, one of my favorite tricks when it comes to these crates is to actually just stand on it. Because if you stand on it, then when your view shifts, you're done. You've collected it. Because a lot of the times when I stood next to it, I would, like, think it was done, and it wasn't, and then I'd walk away, and we'd lose it. So it's just better to stand on it and be like, okay, when I fall down, this crate is ours. Or you could just, you know, not be a noob like me. But if you are a noob like me, that's really helpful. Okay, more crates. Uh, somebody's already on that one, so I'm gonna go take this one. And use my trick. I'll just stand on top of this. Nice! Synth charge. I don't know what that does, but it's probably decent. Oh, and we got a Garuda Systems. Heck yeah! I still gotta build Garuda on my main account. I just like to stand on random stuff. 
Hey, there's there's a, a benefit to standing on random stuff. Sometimes you find really cool angles to fight from just by messing around with that. Okay, so I'm going to head to the exit, and we'll just head on over to see this. I'm surprised, because like, when I looked on the wiki, I think it said that Plastids do spawn as part of the Orvalis missions, like the bounties, but I haven't seen any. Uh, and Plastids right now are the biggest restrictor of our forward progress as far as building frames and everything else goes. I believe I can... I, I just want to bring my K-Drive into the town, guys. There's no reason not to allow this. Oh, that's a very Kuvara skin right there. I like it a lot. Ooh. Man, I am super yawning. I think I just need more coffee or something. Gosh. 50% bonus damage on final shot. Requires magazine 6 or higher. Uh, that's pretty cool, but it's very, very limited as well. I want to look at these Mesa builds real quick. Mesa Primo. So this is the tankier Mesa Primo. Uh, she has the waltz, which lets her keep moving while she's firing. Oh, Constitution. That's a nice, a nice choice for this. Um, and then maxed out vitality. And I'm guessing that the additional duration on this particular build is to provide her with the ability to keep up her, uh, her wall here, her shatter shield. I'm presuming that's how that one works. Yeah, support build focus on duration, or, yeah, duration and survivability. That's what I thought. Um, and then here, we've still got vitality, uh, but we've traded that out for transient fortitude, which will give us even more ability strength. This is so sweet right here. Oh yeah, this is really sweet. I need to get Transient Fortitude on my main. I'm still missing quite a few Corrupted mods on my main right now. I have Narrow Minded and I have Fleeting Expertise, but that's it. Uh, and then let's see what the Regulators look like. Regulators! Yup, I'm missing these Primes. I am missing these Primes. I do have Lethal Torrent now, which is really good. And I have Magnum Force, but I haven't capped it out yet. I probably should. Uh, Psychona, have you seen the Arbitration mod that makes it so that when you unholster... Oh, give me a sec to grab something. No worries. I think I'm going to grab a cup of coffee real quick too, guys. Um, so let's do this. I'm going to run over... Oh, you're here now. Okay. I'm going to leave Fortuna and head us over to Cetus. And then I'm going to grab a cup of coffee real quick, Psychona. Uh, have you seen the mod that increases the damage after you holster a weapon or unholster a weapon that comes from arbitrations? I can't remember what it's called, uh, but it gives, when it's capped out, it gives 165% damage when you unholster a weapon. So if you choose not to use Mesa's waltz, and instead you just jump to a spot, drop into regulator, fire a few shots, jump into a spot, drop into regulator, fire a, sh a few shots... It's another 165% damage you can put on the regulators that you basically don't have to do anything special for. Um, and I, I saw that on a Grind Hard Squad video because that, that guy's videos are great. I regularly reference his stuff. Um, so that's one of the ones I'm working towards. I think it's called Streamlined something. It might be Streamlined Form or something of that nature. Uh, let's see. I bet you I can find it on here. Maybe it's not streamlined form. No, streamlined form increases your holster rate. Arbitration. I bet you I can find it on here by looking at arbitration. Vigorous swap. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so I guess like it used to count every time she pulled a regulator out, but then they nerfed it, so people stopped using it. But it still triggers when you just pull out the regulators normally. So if you use it and you migrate a lot around the map, it actually gives you an extra 165% damage. And when I was, the reason I thought of it when I was looking at your build, Psychona, was because your build had the, uh, the pistol corrupted mod that gave 165% damage and minus 55% accuracy. And it blew my mind because I was like, man, what if you capped that out and then you also brought Vigorous Swap? That's like 430% damage. It's only for three seconds after you activate the regulators, 
But that's insane. Like, just think about that right there. 430% damage for three seconds. You only need three seconds at that point. Everything is dead. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that's a cool thing I might try in the future. I'm actually working up to arbitrations just for Vigorous Swap at this point. Vigorous Swap and Adaptation. Weapons, I just do whatever sounds fun for me. I, I've had a lot of fun just learning how to mod stuff. Because, like, I used to just kind of auto-mod and things like that. Um, but I've had a lot of fun learning how modding actually works and gaining a better understanding of it and playing with different builds. Uh, that's actually one of the funnest things about the game for me is playing with different variants and things like that. Well, it's good for lich hunting. Yeah, well, that's what I use Mesa for a lot. Mesa is my... Uh, so Mesa is my Murmur Farmer. Go grab your coffee before we go. If you have not, I can refill water. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'll be right back, folks. I'm going to go ahead and leave the... Well, actually, I'll leave the screen up like this so you can kind of enjoy the wonderful frames that are around us. And then I'm going to mute my mic and go grab some coffee. I might switch back to standing now. What up, Sedge? How you doing, man? Boop! Alright, there we go. I'm back. I'm back. Da, 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 da. Okay. So here we are in Cetus. How's your morning going, Sedge? And we all move on forward. Check out some cool things. I love Cetus. Cetus is one of my, like, I like Fortuna for themes, but I love the missions in Cetus, and it always, I'm always excited to come to Cetus and check out the bounties, because the bounties always have something cool. Like, Cetus's bounties are just wonderful. And now I'm getting into the Eidolon hunting part of stuff, so I'm excited about that. Gosh, my nose always itches. Oh, no, I didn't even mean to start that. I didn't, okay, well, I guess we're doing that one. <laughs> That's totally fine. We're doing that one now. I was trying to look at the rewards for it, and I clicked the wrong button. Okay. Well, we're doing Capture the Grenier Commander. We got this. We got this. Oh, your cat skin is from here? No, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. I need all of the Gara stuff anyway, so I'm sure this one will work. Um, wait, how'd you get your cat skin from here? You can get a cat skin from here? Or are you talking about the, uh, Adarza Kavat? I think it's the Adarza Kavat, the Vampire Kavat. You can totally get a cat skin from here? How? What, what, what do I do for this cat skin? Share with me your secrets. Boom, boom, boom. Here we go. You can also grind trees here, guys, which is 
There, there's something to be said for being able to grind trees. Oh, it cycles in? Yeah. Yeah. I gotta I gotta watch the vendors now. I need me that kavat. Alright, where are you guys at? Also, I'm gonna be shooting these because we're gonna need Brock Droll later to build a certain important launcher. Hello, enemies. I can just light you up a little bit. Oh my god, I hate you, Arctic M Eximus. Although, honestly, I don't hate him that much because we do need to kill some Eximus, so that's a good thing. What is that ticking? Oh, that's part of the music. Okay. Uh, so we want to destroy the supplies. Bam, there we go. Oh, we need to eliminate 30 enemies before we destroy all of the supplies, though. So it's a good thing to keep in mind. Well, that's going to go pretty quickly if we can just do that. Toasty. Oh, more coming in. Come on, give me some, some friends to toast. Well, that was relatively fast. I like how I just fired into the air there because I have no aim. In case you're wondering, I have the worst aim humanly possible. And you know what's really weird about that, too, is that, like, I was doing really, really good at Valorant for a while, aiming well and things like that, and now, like, my aim is just terrible. It's just bad. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, well, there we go. Did we get the bonus on that one? I think we did. I hope we did. I always jump... If you're wondering why I always bullet jump in the air before I jump onto my uh, K-Drive, it's because there is a bug where you can hop on your K-Drive and fall through the, the planet, and I don't like that bug. Uh, it's from Master, whatever his name is. Oh, okay. I'll keep an eye out for him then. Alright, so... Go back to town, we can check if he has it. Forgot what he wants for it. Lizard Kitty? Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Must have. I don't like my my Smita Kavat, I'm not a huge fan of. Oh my gosh, one of the people in our party is actually putting together uh, an Eidolon lure. Which is terrifying. Oh, nice. We're getting some good Eximus kills here, too. Bonus, keep the drone above 80% health. They're already there. I'm just kind of killing stuff along the way. Uh, which, you know, whatevs. Arson Eximus, beautiful. Let's see if we can toast him. Here we go, we're getting some Eximus kills on the way. Because they've already started this thing and I'm not anywhere near them at the moment. We could also try to hijack one of those Dargins to get there faster, but... I guess I'll just K-Drive over. Do, 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 do. Forward flip and get stuck on the rock. It's the same skin from the Orc and Derelict. Oh, okay. I'm actually ahead? Am I? Oh. Alright then. Hey, I did it. Toast everybody. I don't see the drone, though? What is that white icon if it's not the drone? Okay. Gotta get back to the drone. Oh, that's where we're taking the drone too, isn't it? I'm just being a spaz. That's what I'm being. Shows how often I've run these lately. Oh my gosh, this drone is taking way too much damage. Who's even hitting it? Oh, it's those stupid Dargins. Okay, well, the sad news is we lost the bonus here, but that's that's just what it is. What is this, like, ice that's raining down from the sky? I've not seen that before. Alright. Pressure point's a decent pickup here. That's where we were taking the drone. Yeah, I'm being dumb. You get the hoverboard now the first time you get on the planes? Uh, no. You get the hoverboard for completing the introductory quest on Fortuna. Uh, so yeah, I recommend going to Fortuna before you really start sweating doing stuff on Cetus. 
And that's primarily just because you won't be able to get around Cetus very easily. Oh, this is the one everybody fails. Psychana, are you ready to fail this bonus? Because everybody fails this. I've had this successfully done one time in my entire time playing Warframe. Because somebody always kills, like, enemies. I'm going to try to make sure I'm not the one that does that. Oh, it could be Frost Prime. Yeah, I've not played as Frost before, so that would make sense. Why oh, yeah, see, there we go. I didn't even get there, and we failed it. Ooh. All right, Hornet Strike is a mod. Well, in that case, might as well just kill these dudes. And there are different places around the Plains of Cetus where you can pick up more bounties. I'm going to look for one of those. They're usually not super far apart, so I'm sure we can find one just messing around. I might have actually just moved away from one now that I think about it. Uh, but that's okay. We just basically got to keep our... There's one right there, I bet. Yep, that should be one we can do. Uh, we can go back into town and look for the cat skin. Oh, that's a good point. That is a very good point. All right, let, let's go back. Let's go back into town and give the cat skin a look-see. So many flips. So that's curious. If you flip and stuff here, does it actually give you vent kids rep? Like, that is actually a curious thing. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Can I shoot this into the door? Haha, -ha, no, it disappears. They were like, no, you cannot wreck your K-Drive into Fortuna. That's awesome. Okay, so we got a little bit of Grokdol there. That's actually probably the biggest pickup from that round was Grokdol. And that's mainly just because that's going to help us build our Arcwing Launcher, which will allow us to get around the Plains of Cetus and Orbalus much easier. And the Bolter's almost ranked 20, so that's nice too. Master Tizonai, you get rep for flips? Yes, you do. You get reps for you get rep for all of your tricks, and it caps out at a certain point. But I can't remember how much it is. I think it's three thousand rep per trick you can gain. Um, and one of the things that's interesting about that is that you can basically grind this one rail in Fortuna and get three thousand rep just like that. Uh, I'm gonna look at the bounties real quick, Sykana, and then I'll go check the vendor. You can check the vendor, and I'll come over there in a moment. Uh, let's see. Do you have plasmids? Plasmids for the poor. No, you do not. All right. Well, that's relatively unfortunate. There is an Augur Secrets available, which is very nice. Um, but that's going to be a much higher level mission that I probably won't actually be able to contribute much in. Ooh, Purex Wraith Right Gauntlet is an interesting thing, too. Oh, and a sword stance. That's actually rare. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, the rewards today are not what they could be. Uh, the neural sensors would allow us to build something, though. And nobody has those plasmids, though. No plasmids for me. Uh, so I'll grab that, and then I'm gonna go look at Master Tensai. Master Tensai, where you at, homeboy? Nope, that's Hawk. Here we go, Master Tensai, browse words. Trade tags, barter goods. Oh! I didn't know this was a thing! Oh my gosh, guys. Mind blown. I thought that you could only... I just thought he had, like, rep stuff you could buy here. 
certain individual. I was totally unaware that you could barter for these things. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. I gotta get all the things now. I gotta get all the things now. That is such a cool skin. Nissel pod and mawfish bones. Okay. Well, I know what I'm doing on my main tonight. So a really crazy doggo skin and a burb. Yeah, yeah, the burb was like, I was like, ooh, I can put that on my orbiter. I had no idea. No idea. My, the majority of my experience in Cetus, though, has pretty much been the bounties. I'm all about them bounty lives. Okay, so we Tony Hawk now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It'll cycle. <clears throat> It'll cycle in 5.5 hours. Okay. Well, I know exactly what I'm doing when stream ends. Uh, in fact, you know what I might do? Let's make them find out a Get them as soon as possible. I might... Let's do this bounty, and then I might switch over to my main account for a minute, just so I can show off some of my neat things there, and we can try to grab these real quick. Because I probably got the, the thistle paws, I probably just need the mawfish bones. Let's go! Go, Speed Racer, go! <laughs> I'm gonna get copyright strike for singing that, oh my gosh. Oh, guys, no joke. Like, okay, so speaking of copyright strikes, you know what's really crazy is when you record a game and then the game music gets you copyright striked? It's like, what? What is this? What is even happening right now? Well, I mean, it didn't get me copyright striked. Let me, let me clarify. It got tagged as copyrighted music and then they put ads on my video. Uh, but that's not the same as a copyright strike. Those are very different things. Uh, Cat, I'm, I'm not gonna name any names in the interest of being respectful. Um, but I'll give you a hint. It, it's something that I found out about from and looked at at PAX. Uh, something I, I've been very, very fond of. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was surprising. Um, very, very surprising. But I mean, I reached out to see if if there was an issue with the music. Uh, and honestly, just just to inform the developer that that was happening because, you know, it may be that they license the music, but the licensing isn't right for it to be able to be used in YouTube videos. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that could go. So it's not as much of a, like, a, oh, oh no, how, how dare you, as much as it's more of a, just so you know, this is happening, uh, you might want to resolve it, because if you don't, you could have trouble getting larger YouTubers to cover the content kind of thing. Because you know how larger, a lot of larger YouTubers make a lot of money off of ad rev, so for them, that would be more of a hit. For me, it doesn't really matter. For me, it's like, oh no, my audience, who I highly recommend uses ad blocker anyway, are going to see ads potentially, or probably not. So it is what it is. Well, hello there. Yeah, I'm sure it was not intentional. Oh yeah. I, I have no doubt that that wasn't intentional by the devs. Like, obviously, they're not going to do that to mess with people or something. Like, there's no benefit to it whatsoever. I just wanted to reach out because I wasn't sure if the license was an issue or what. But it's always interesting when that happens because I was like, dude, what did I do? What did I do? I didn't use any music. How is this? What, what's going on? It just shocked me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, licensing for music in games is really, really weird. Um, I mean, licensing for music in general is really, really weird. There's nothing at all straightforward about it. Okay, you just float off into eternity then. Bye. Oof. Enemies, please. Calm yourselves. Oh my gosh, Nidus' tentacles are so cool.
Alright, let's open this up and see if there's any goodies inside. A lot of the times when you crack these open, there's Grok Drool inside. Which is nice, because as I was saying, you do have to accrue quite a bit of Grok Drool and Iridite and things like that in order to build the Arcwing Launcher. Get toasted, boys. Get toasted. Alrighty then. Got some ferrite and some iridite. Very nice. I do have a really, really good trick, and I'll I'll cover this probably on the beginner's guide when I uh, I talk to them about how they're gonna farm up the materials for the Arcwing launcher. But if you guys are ever in need of iridite and you're having trouble gathering large quantities of it, the best trick for that is to actually grab the highest level bounty available. And then just go into the plains of Eidolon. Don't go do the mission. Just go hit Iridite nodes. Because if you put it on the highest level bounty, each of those nodes gives you three instead of one. And that is hugely, hugely faster than going for them one at a time. Uh, let's see. Where are you guys at? And they look almost pink in this lighting. It's actually kind of funny. Hi there. Let me just give you a little shivy shiv. And we're on to the next one. Okay, game, where are we at? There it goes. Find the assassination target. Nice. Hopefully this is just that don't kill anybody else thing. But usually I think it saves that for the last one. Oh, no. You got to draw the target out in one minute. See, stuff like this is kind of not cool when you have the K-Drive. Because, like, you do have transit time if you have the K-Drive saying draw them out in one minute. It's basically like get a bonus if you have the Arcwing Launcher. Thankfully, some of our squad mates do have the Arcwing Launcher, so they're fine. Oh my gosh, is that a Tusker? Oh boy, we have a Tusker here as well. I'm not even going to mess with that Tusker unless somebody else on our team decides they want to go after it, because it is no small task. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I kind of put my wall up there because I wanted to shoot at its knee. <laughs> but then it just knocked us down. Uh, what's really fun is we tried farming those. Me and Bolt did. And we were farming them using Rhino because Rhino can't be knocked down if Iron Skin is up. And let me tell you, even with that, it's just that they absorb way too much damage. It's hard to kill them because of how much damage they absorb. Ooh, ow. That wasn't what I was going for. All right, on to the next site. Oh, I guess Phantom Zora is leaving group. I wonder if he's going to stick back and fight the Tusker. And that's why he's leaving. I don't know. It is interesting, though, because in Cetus, if you leave mid-mission... Ow, I just ran into a tree. <laughs> wow. That was graceful. Very graceful. Bonus, eliminate enemies. 12 out of 30. So I'm trying to get over here as quickly as possible so that we can shock these guys and kill a bunch of enemies at once. There we go. Toast them up quickly, see if we can get ourselves to that 30 fast enough. Thought some more just landed, but now I don't see them. Hi, Tusk Reaver. Just calm down, you. All right, there you go. Three more kills, and we make it to the limit that we're looking for. Rock rule here, but I think we just had some more guys come down. I just don't know where. They keep dropping them, but I'm not sure where they're dropping them. Okay. Oh, I don't think we got the bonus there. We only needed a couple more kills, but somebody destroyed the supplies first. Oh well. It is what it is. 
It is what it is. Okay, let's head into Cetus Psychona and then I'll hop on my main. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Honestly, like, I probably could have been over there sooner to help you guys out. So it's, it's not really a big deal. There are plenty of bonuses to be had there. It's really not a big deal. Front flips are entertaining. I don't know why I even have my map up. If you're ever trying to find Cetus, just look for the tower. Just go straight to the tall tower. Because that's Cetus. Uh, and if you're in Fortuna, look for the smokestack. Although it's a little bit harder in Fortuna because sometimes there's other, like, smoke effects that can resemble the smokestack. But this will save a lot of time looking at the map as a new player and trying to guide yourself back to Cetus. You really just look for the tower and go. Oh, that was weak. I was trying to charge up for another quick jump, but I was in the air, so instead I just did a 180 and then hit that rock and got stuck. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, this is making me wish for my Arcwing, guys. Making me wish for my Arcwing. Soon, though. Soon. And away we go. Alrighty then. Bolt up the wall. <laughs> Bouncing off the walls. We got Undying Will there, which is interesting at the very least. And Seismic Wave. Ooh. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. I probably got it and just never looked at it. That is incredible. Okay, I will be... Swapping over, and in the meantime, you guys can enjoy the view of Kuvara. So yeah, I'm going to be logging into my main account right quick, and we will be taking a look at some of the goodies over there, as well as working on grabbing that Kavat skin. And maybe even the Kubro skin. I don't know what the materials were for the Kubro skin, though. Man, I gotta work on the Oxalis Companion, because, like, the Oxalis Companion has, um... God. It's the one that paints the fish in the water. It makes it so you don't need a fishing dye or anything. It's Archetime. Oh my gosh. Saikana, have I, I haven't shown you my nuker yet. Oh, this thing. This thing is... Mwah. It is, like, the most awesome. cannot wait cannot wait to show off my nuker it is so powerful operator messages have arrived in your inbox okay sweet and i got a zener plan so let me solve a solution for the equation i represent there we go Kubro beautiful might fathom a card trick okay so apparently last time i was on i was on limbo let's go ahead and switch to somebody a little more fun for this uh let's see Neza could be good because he gets around quickly. Necros isn't capped out, so maybe I'll just take him. Yeah, we could take Necros. Necros seems fine. Wukong is also a blast. Uh, I already maxed this out again, I guess. I think I formed this a moment ago. Or maybe I chose not to form it. I think I chose not to form it. Uh, do we have a weapon that is actually leveling, though? I don't think we do. I think I've capped pretty much everything. Yup, capped pretty much everything. So I guess we'll just take the comb, even though it doesn't matter. And then the nuker is right here. And then for melee, we'll grab a grab uh, Gram Prime, probably. Because that's my boy. Uh, Smita Kavad is good. Gear is probably fine. The Nuker microwave them, my favorite secondary. Mine too. Mine too. The Nuker is so strong. 
so, 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 so strong. Okay, let me check real quick, see if there's anything in the oven that I need to pull out. Nope. Forma is cooking. Wisp is cooking. Over on Prime is cooking. Oh my gosh. And before we go in, because I love them. Crax cards. Cat, did you know about this? These beautiful little tarot cards that you can put in your ship as decorations. Just lovely. Just a lovely touch. Okay, so let's head over to Cetas. I heard of them, but have none. If you've capped any of the frames that are in the Lavarian, you just look around the Lavarian area and that's how you find them. Uh, let's go to Earth. Cetas. Yeah, they're hidden. Uh, like the Ivara one, if you had Ivara, the one that spawns for her is literally right be behind where you spawn in. If you turn around and walk to the edge, you can find it. Do, 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 do. I wonder where this guy's at. I still need to do syndicates and I need to play one emote. Well, I can That's do the play one emote me. really easy. Alrighty then. That lovely, lovely orbiter skin. Not as lovely as the Nightwave Orbiter, though. Oh my gosh, guys, we're gonna be able to colorize the Nightwave Orbiter. How cool is that? How cool is that? Necros is a bony bird boy. That's what he is. Oh god, I love that though. His face is just so cool. Alrighty then, let's go talk to... I guess we don't need to talk to uh, Kanzu at all. Uh, let's just do invite only because we're fishing and that way we don't get people wanting to do missions. Uh, and let me go check Master Tonzanananan. I just make up names for people at this point. Master Tonzanananan. What do you What do you want here? Okay, well, I can just get this. So sweet. Can I just get this too? I can. Okay, well that was hard work, guys. That was hard work. It took a lot of effort. A lot of effort, but uh, yeah. And then the caged condor I can probably just get as well. I can't. I can't just get the ca Oh, wait, no, I don't have the fair steel alloy. Okay, so yeah. Guess not. Hmm. What to do next? Since we didn't really need to do anything to get that stuff, it's really a matter of what to do next. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Yeah, that was super, super easy. I Actually, you know what? Let's go back to the Orbiter and put the skin on. <laughs> that's that's a start. Um, and we've got maybe 15 minutes left, so maybe we'll run a Nightmare or something. That wouldn't be too bad. There's a, a Nightmare mod that drops out of, like, low-level Nightmares that I still don't have that's, like, plus 60%. I want to say plus 60% crit and plus 80% status. For your primary which is really really strong uh, so I wouldn't mind going to look for that okay so I've never actually changed the appearance of my my Kavat before so I don't know exactly what I'm doing here well it's definitely not under upgrade I know that much uh, let's go to appearance hyacinth fur pattern moonless oh That is just awesome. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. I am so, so sold. You guys saw what my Kavat used to look like, right? Like, what, what, what is this? Why does it have a fishtail? Why does it have a fishtail and look like somebody smacked it in the face? This thing is awesome. Look at that. That's just gorgeous. Smoosh face, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It looks like those, uh, those, what is it, Pekingese? The cats? You, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and then we actually have color choices here, which is nice. So I don't think I had those before either. Oh, it's so cool. I like the brown. 
Yeah, I like this brown. Uh, I like that brown. Oh, these are just incredible. Just incredible. I'm actually really partial to that or that. I think we'll go with the red just because it looks awesome. Uh, and then for tertiary colors, oh, this is so very cool. Oh my goodness. I love this. This is great. I'm going to go for that because it looks kind of lit up. And then for the accents. Oh yes. He's a glowy boy now. Mine has a weird tail. I t I'll take the skin off for the next mission. Yeah, that fish tail though, right? Like I know you can sell the DNA for your cats because people buy them because of the look of the cat. But yeah, it's, it's interesting to me because I'm like... That fishtail, though. Osprey blue for emissives. That's fine. Uh, I don't even know if I have any attachments. Oh my gosh, I can put ephemera on my cat. I didn't realize that was a thing. Yes, 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 yes. Um, blue. Can I, can I change the lighting color? Blue. There we go. Oh, it's so cool. My Kavat is a machine now. Fear the Kavat. Uh, it's got Solaris emblems on both sides. But I think I'm going to switch it to the Scarlet Spear emblems. It's weird that that one says one and this one doesn't. Still, that's cool. I love it. I love it a lot. That's adorable. And by adorable, I mean it looks like it would eat your soul. Uh, if you want to do the mutagen mass bit, my husband would totally join. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That is, I'm guessing, under, yeah, invasions, probably. Wait, that's not it. Why can I not? Weird. Okay, top one, Psychona says. That's Fieldrin, though. But I mean, yeah, I'm down for Fieldrin. Um, yeah, this is the Fieldrin one. The Mutagen Mass one is different, and for some reason it won't let me select it. Is this the right one though? Um, and here, I'll just here I'll invite you guys, and you guys can take us through it too. Okay, no worries. I'll shoot him an invite as well. I'm in no rush. Uh, this will be cool. This will be the first time I've gotten to run with him. So awesome! I am excited. You you can see that Psychona's hubby is. MR28. He is the man. <laughs> that, that's where we're at. And I am lowly, lowly... Oh, I'm MR14, so I guess I do still need to get a few mastery ranks. Alrighty then, I'll let you guys queue up the mission, Psychona, because I, for whatever reason, when I went for the one that had muted, mutagen masses, it wouldn't let me pick it. It might be because I don't have the node, but it looked like I had the node. So I am vaguely confused by it. Yeah, because it was this one, and it's Iliad. And I have Iliad. So I'm not sure why it wouldn't allow me to pick it. Yep, there we go. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Prisma Mortis, thank you for that follow. Welcome in. <laughs> yes, I gotta get back into the game so I can fly with everybody. Oh my gosh, that was great. The swaying. 
the swaying of the the ships in accordance with the we all live together was perfect. All right, desecrate is active. In case anybody wants to desecrate things. I don't see the laser. That's weird. I was firing the nuker there, but the laser wasn't showing. Oh, I think it's like I think it's because we have a wisp that it's broken. Okay, that's fine. I need to stop messing around anyway and catch up, so let's do that. Alright. Don't want to underperform here, guys. Pressure's on. Can't look like a spaz in front of my new friend. Your <laughs> Oh my gosh. Infested, please. Let me through. I need to I need to nuker the forehead. Okay, here we go. Take them down. Well, that was fast. Yeah, it's weird that I can't see my beam. But everything explodes, so you know you're doing it right at that point. Missed some redeemer pellets. I have failed. <laughs> Gonna end for its whole career. <laughs> ah, this feels better. At least the pressure's off of me. When when the person you're like, I gotta impress them, is, is talking about failing, I think you did fine. Does look like a spaz next to Siege? I mean, when when your barometer for success is I miss some of the redeemer pellets, that's a pretty it's a pretty high bar. I I didn't even know, like I have guns that shoot pellets, but I don't know exactly how that works or anything. I mean, I get that they they count as separate calculations, I think, for status and all that, but like, I I wouldn't even know if I miss some of the pellets. That's the point I'm making. Alrighty. Gotta get to that exit. Don't wanna hold everybody up. There we go. And of course, the victory dance. You're making waves, <laughs> I, can I didn't even intend to get that night wave. That was just a side effect, but I'll take it. I will take it. Oh. Nyx. I don't have Nyx yet. What is Nyx's thing? Is Nyx the psychic one? My lich is here stealing all my stuff. My lich has the the hammer. Like, I, I can't wait to kill it because I want the hammer. I don't have a Kuva melee weapon yet. So if I get the hammer, I'll have a Kuva weapon for every single slot. That being said, I don't know if the Kuva melee is actually better than, like, the Grand Prime. The Grand Prime is pretty beefy. So is the Orthos Prime, though. Um, I do hear, though, that the Redeemer Prime is the best. Nyx is mind control and absorb pellets or something. Ah, okay, that's what I thought. Um, yeah, I have heard very, very many people say that the Redeemer Prime is, like, the pinnacle of putting out that damage in the melee slot. And we all drift together. I have the stance for it, but I don't have it yet. You know what I don't have a stance for, though? I don't have a stance for one-handed swords. I've never had a stance for one-handed swords, ever. Kuva melee is a great weapon. Oh, I'm not I'm not surprised by that. The Kuva shield dig looks really good. I can't remember what I was planning on doing with it. I think it has a, a decently high status chance. Uh, so I might just go that way with it. But it's also an impact weapon, and impact is like, you know, less than less than ideal for several reasons. Mainly being that it is more defensive than offensive. Uh, but still, I assume that because it's a Kuva weapon, it'll be perfectly good. Because <laughs> all of the Kuva weapons I have have been ridiculously strong. Even ones I thought I wouldn't like, I'm like, wow, this is actually really, really good. Like, when I got the nuker, I was like, man, this is weak. I didn't want that. I wanted another Brahma or, like, something good. It, it's good. It's good. 
Yeah, the nuker is very strong. Kubo melee weapon is great. Just slap on blood rush. Yeah, that that is kind of what I figured. Although it's a slower weapon, but I mean, Graham is a slower weapon, and Graham still does great with blood rush as well. We're all adrift together. All right. Just a short distance to the exit. And by the time I even got to forward, like, he was dead. I didn't even get to shoot him. I tried, but I was too slow. I pulled back my bow and he died. Ooh, plastids. Nice. And we're all adrift together. Together. I love that song so much. It gets stuck in my head so bad. <laughs> Boom goes the dynamite. They won't be bothering us anymore. Let's get out of here. A bunch of single-handed sword ones for Pangolin Prime. Yeah, I've never like I used Broken War as my main melee weapon for so long because it's actually a really, really strong weapon that you get for free and already has a catalyst in it. And I just never ever got a uh, a stance for it. See, I, I need to form a, my nuker one more time, but the, the reality is that with the nuker right now, like... Look at this build, y'all. I've got 13 capacity left with my build, and all of my mods are capped out. The only thing that would make it better is Primed Target Cracker and Primed Hornet Strike, which I just don't have. Uh, and Lethal Momentum is kind of garbage, but... Lethal Momentum I would like to replace with... The mod that allows you to pick up any ammunition as pistol ammunition, I just don't have it yet. <laughs> Stole literally everything but ghost mod. Oh my gosh, that's so bad. Yes, that would be great. I feel so bad. Oh my god, Psychana. Um, so, like I told you, I've been running with my friend Bolt. Like, I got him into the game. He's been loving it. He just, the last time Baro Katir came to town, he just spent 550 Ducats buying the Ignis Wraith. And I was like, bro, the blueprint is basically worthless. I have somebody that's going to give me some. And he was like, oh. <laughs> I just felt so bad. Because it was like, dang, that's a lot of Ducats. Yeah, press F to pay respects on that one for real. I got a Riven for my Nuker. Oh, that would be a good way for me to spend that extra capacity, huh? Yeah, I've got some pistol Rivens that I haven't cracked yet that I should look into. Because uh, the biggest problem with that is, like, I want to form it to take it up to rank 40, but I don't need to. Like, there's literally nothing else I need to put on it, because it's basically a straight-up status weapon. And I gave it crit chance and critical damage to boost it, but... Oh my gosh. Forward is so dead. Alas, poor Forward. We knew him well. And I didn't have Desecrate up because I'm a bad Necros. Yes, press F to pay respects for Forward. Forward didn't even get to press F before he got respected. Blood for ammo, mercy refills, or er, primary ammo. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Yeah, that, that was crazy. That was better than uh, Dexpixia's on the Ropa list. He just dead, yeah. He, like, came into existence and died all at the same moment. He is a living, well, not a living, breathing, a dead, not breathing paradox in and of himself. Man, I like these new, the new uh, Prime, like, avian attachments, too. They look really good on Necros. I thought I wouldn't like them on anyone, but they do look really good on Necros. Little wing things on the side, those look cool. And Nyx Neuroptic, sweet. Mercy refills primary and secondary magazine by 100%. That's pretty nice, actually. See, I was... All three times, also three Neuroptics. RNG. <laughs> yeah, RNG can be a, a pain sometimes. Uh, so I am... 
I'm kind of stalling because I suspect that Siege is going to invite me to their awesome dojo to trade for the blueprints. And I kind of want to spy on their dojo and see what it looks like because I'm building mine. Also, I don't know if my trading post is, exists yet. <laughs> I started it yesterday and I think it's done, but I can't say for sure. <laughs> I, uh, you know what? Okay, so he just left, so I'm guessing he's probably going to go pick up some blueprints, which means I'm going to jump over to my dojo real quick and we'll see. Oh, or that. That works too. Oh yeah, that's fine. That's totally fine. I'm excited to see this dojo. It's so cool when you go to other people's dojos sometimes, because like the dojo I was in before had access to all the research, but it was super bare bones because it was meant to just be a Ghost Clan cheap dojo. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at this. That's gorgeous. Um... I doubt there's anything I can give him that he doesn't already have. I strongly doubt it. And I mean, I'm sure he doesn't care either. Uh, here. <laughs> I'll give him a warm coat. <laughs> Holy blueprints, Batman. That's awesome. Okay, that's what I figured. Okay, I'm just going to take a quick look around because this is gorgeous. Oh my gosh, guys, look at this. I'm assuming this is the grandest hall. So I'm going to be attaching my grandest hall to my... to the second largest hall. So I'm curious how they would interact with each other because I've got them set up so that the main doors connect. Oh. Wow, this is beautiful. Look at this. The atmospherics. This is so cool. It'll probably take me years to build anything as cool as this. It's just gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Okay. Look at the floor plan. Oh, holy crap. Wait, what is that big square right there? Is that the architect's obstacle course? Oh my. The floating discs. Are those a thing? How do you build those? Can you just place them in the air? Or is that part of this room? Oh, it must be put... Oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is amazing. Holy crap. Okay, so this is the Inspiration Hall, because I was curious about what the Inspiration Hall was, too. Because I was placing it, and it's not going to have things at every terminal, so I was, like, worried about the design a little bit. But I think it's okay. The Ascension Hall. Okay. Ooh, and this must be the Architect's Obstacle Course. Wow, this is just absolutely insane. Can you find the secret turtle in the main hall, though? I, I accept this challenge. If the secret turtle was this thing up here, then yes, I found it. <laughs> if that's the secret turtle, then yeah, I found it. Because I saw these things and I was like, these are really cool. Like, wh where do they go? That is incredible. Oh man, that's just amazing. That's not the secret turtle. Apparently it's in the main hall. Okay. Okay, so I gotta find the main hall. Oh, see, they put their halls together too. This is actually perfect because I was curious how they would fit together. Oh wow, that's, that's perfect. That's actually perfect. Okay, is this the main hall? Because if it is... I'm down for this. I'm going to find me a secret turtle. Oh, oh, watch this, guys. Bet. Bet that it's up here somewhere. Like, hidden out of sight. Ah, oh, come on, me. Jump puzzle 101. Let's go.
I don't know where the main hall is going to fast travel. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Main hall's not one. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teleporters. Where's the teleporter? Oh, there's one right here. Okay. I don't see main hall as a... Ha. Go to a lab and you can leave the room. Okay. Oh, this is the main hall. This is the main hall right here. All right, so I'm looking for a secret turtle. This is so cool. They've got Roombas and everything that keep their dojo sparkly clean. Oh my god. <laughs> Space Mom Noggle for the win. Uh, I don't know what that thing is. That is terrifying. So if I was going to hide a secret turtle, where would I hide it? This is so cool, though. I am just, like, endlessly impressed. I aspire to one day have a, a dojo that is half this cool looking. Oh, and their clan logo looks so cool, too. What the? The Roombas have stopped at the altar to, to Space Mom. You're standing on the secret turtle? Why don't I see you anywhere near me, though? Because I'm in the main hall. Wait, where are you at? I don't see you at all, though. Go to the lab and you can re leave the room. Let me try that. Oh, okay. I see, I see. Okay. Interesting. Oh, I knew it would be somewhere high up. I knew it. I knew it. I was looking in the right area. Oh my gosh. That's incredible. That is incredible. And it's just him, too. He is the only random hidden turtle. That is so cool. Uh, just... I... Sorry, guys. I'm super nerding out right now. <laughs> oh, yes. This is gorgeous, though. So it must have taken a lot of work, too. Like, I I don't know if these shrubs come pre-built or if you have to build that or what. Like, that's the, the crazier thing is I don't know how much of this stuff is, like, pre-built or not. Random thought. Tenno are clearly very considerate folk. They don't really need stairs, but still build them for other people. <laughs> this is very true. But I mean, okay, but but the ramps. Where are the ramps? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All those Ducats, and he just bought the digital pass for Borrow's relay. <laughs> Man, this is super cool. This has actually been super, super inspirational for my dojo. Thank, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, anyways, I, I already said thank you. I'm kind of gushing at this point. Gonna, I'm gonna try to be. Oh, what, what was that? No, I don't want to set up shop. I was, I was bowing in appreciation. There we go. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for letting me look at this. This is incredible. This is exactly what I was I was curious about was how this would all fit together and it fits together very nicely. Oh my gosh, and these gardens, it's different when you see these on a planner than it is when you see them in reality because on a planner they just look so much smaller. Like when I thought of gardens as an adjoining room on the planner, 
I thought, well, this is going to be really weird. It's going to be this little boxy garden thing and nobody's going to know what the deal is. But like when you walk in here, you don't think this is really weird. Why is this connected to this? You go, wow, this is a beautiful garden. Look at this cool thing over here that I can climb up on and look around. Uh, yeah, this is just incredible. So yeah, Saikana, make make sure I know I'm gushing, but uh, send send siege thanks for me once more. Uh, I'm probably gonna call a stream here though, guys, because it's noon and I gotta I gotta go get B up and probably grab something to eat because my stomach is growling. Uh, but man, this is just incredible. I am taken aback by the beauteous, beauteous dojo. God, such a cool way to use all these different things too. Because a lot of the dojo building seems to be based around, like, finding unique ways to use decorations and things. Oh, and this is the observatory. I've never actually seen the observatory before. Because the last dojo I was in didn't have one. Oh, so it's navigation. That's what... It... That's a giant Tenno arm or something. That's awesome. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. That is gorgeous. Okay, okay. I'm gonna leave the dojo now, and I'm going to end the stream because I'm I'm super gushing, uh, and this is awesome, and I'm excited to start my three month or more. The arms were added apparently. So cool! Thank you guys so much, uh, and thank you all for joining me on stream today, and I will catch you next time.